Greetings, Bat Family, and welcome back to Holy Batcast, brought to you by Real Fans for Real Movies. Visit HolyBatcast.com or find us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube. Search for Holy Batcast. You'll find us. If you love the show, you want to help support us, you can do that on Patreon. You go to Patreon.com slash Holy Batcast. And as always, a big thank you to our patrons. You guys are amazing. We love you. And your contribution is definitely appreciated. It definitely keeps the show running. So big ol' thank you to all of you guys. Uh, we're part of the Real Fans Podcast Network, so check out all those shows at rf4rm.com. And I get, get, I've got to give a special shout out to our pal Michael Lyons. You guys know Michael Lyons from Disorder, occasionally on this show, uh, Real Fans show. He's made his way around most of the shows in the network. He's the nicest dude in the world. And now he just launched his own podcast. It's called From Pencils to Pixels, the Animation Celebration Podcast. And it's him and our good friend Scott Hopkins, who you've also heard with me on Why Not Futurama or Real Fans. Um, They're talking about animation. They're talking about Disney and Warner Brothers and Hanna-Barbera and ruby spears and peanuts and all kinds of fun animation stuff it just launched last week they're two of my best friends in the world and their show is already super fun so go check that out from pencils to pixels it's in all the same places you get this show but i know that michael and scotty would appreciate it if you would check out the show and subscribe to that as well so go check them out uh, as always i'm andy de genova you can follow me on twitter or on instagram it's just my name andy de genova on this episode, we are going to talk some news. We got quite some fun things to talk about, especially the fact that the world needs heroes. It's the big thing, but there are a couple other little things in there too. We're going to do another episode of Batman Beyond, the one we've been waiting for, the one we've been building to. And then as always, we'll check in with you guys in the Wayne Manor mailbox. Joining me for all this fun and more are my two Bat Pals. We're all together again Two weeks in a row. This is so exciting. This is so nice. You know, it feels like the Bat family. It feels like the end of Batman and Robin when it's Batman, Robin, and Batgirl all running together. We're just one big happy Bat family. So first it's Jamie. Hey, Jamie. Welcome back. Happy Saturday night. They said the world needs heroes, so I answered the call. I'm, I'm, I'm oh, all in. Okay, so that's that's you then. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's me. I'm, Good. I'm podcast man. All right, that's that's Ang- good. Angry podcast man, able to get pissed off about anything in a single word. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, superpowers include uh, turning one image or or ten seconds of footage into a two hour long conversation. Yeah, I also am, I'm like Ben Stiller in uh, Mystery Men, where like I just sit there and rage out. And I oh. don't really do anything. I just Arr! Mr. Furious. Yeah, that. Yeah. Oh my God, Mystery Men. Haven't thought about that in a while. I like that movie. You know, I, I revisited it about a year, year and a half ago, because it was in the iTunes 4.99 bin. Yeah. I didn't really love it then. Don't really love it now. Didn't really, oh. did not really get better with age, in my opinion. I don't think it's great, but it's, I enjoy it. Of course, I haven't watched it in like ten years either. So. Yeah, it's it's okay. Uh, anyway, we've also got Brendan Lowe. Hey, Brendan, Bat hey, Brother guys. Down Under. How you doing? We're all right. That's good. <laughs> okay, great. Good good talk, everybody. It was great. We used up all the conversation before you hit record, see? As yeah. I said, the listeners don't know we've chatted for about an hour already. Yeah, we already we're all caught up, but they the friends out there in internet land have no idea what the hell's going on. <laughs> No, Jamie was telling make, us all about good. the Chinese restaurants in his town, going under, switching ownership, changing menus, them trying to recreate Chinese food at home, all kinds of stuff. I Brendan, that Brendan, chat, we chatted and a his lot kid, about yeah, being dads, it was being great. dads. Oh my God! Yep. So all the fun things, <laughs> the things that guys talk about when they get together. Um, exactly. Yeah, like Batman, like sports. We talked a little about sports. I didn't help much, but we talked about it. And then talking well, about sports movies. So well, I know exactly. It. It's kind of it's kind of a nice gray area. Um, and talking about manscaping. We didn't do that. Well, we thought, saved that for this. Of course, we're not, so, we're not stupid. Yeah. So of course, I've got to give a shout out to our sponsor, Manscaped, Manscaped.com, for all your manscaping needs. They have all the products that you need to make sure that everything remains nice and tidy downstairs. Our promo code, as always, is Batscaped. You get twenty percent off and free shipping. And uh, again, 
I know Valentine's Day, well, as of this, Valentine's Day is still two days away. Maybe you can get rush shipping, but even so, even so, even without Valentine's Day, every night should be Valentine's Day, and you're going to want to trim things up. I got to tell you guys this. I haven't told you this, but I'm not, I'm not going to use names to protect the innocent. But if, <laughs> a few episodes ago, we were talking about Manscaped. Okay. And it was the first time Brendan was on since we got our Manscaped products. And Brendan overshared. He told us everything. Well, more, it's just being honest. More than we ever needed to know, more than we ever wanted to know. But he shared it all. We have That's no more conversation in Australia. Yeah, we have no more secrets on this show anymore, guys. Um, and <laughs> like one, we have it, did. <laughs> well, some of it was, I mean, we don't off the air, but on the air. Um, so I get a message from one of our listeners. And he says, so I was listening to the latest episode and Brendan's sharing way too much about Manscaped. And he said that he was cracking his ass off. He was laughing his butt off. And his wife was like, what are you laughing at? And he said, oh my God, I'm listening to Holy Batcast. They're talking about Manscaped. They're talking about trimming their balls and it's killing me. And his wife said, you need to order that. <laughs> And I'm like, first of all, thank you for telling me. That's amazing. And it's also, I think, a good example of like, I think there are guys out there who are like, I don't need to do that. My wife don't some, care. Some people don't have the self-awareness to realize it, which yeah. is why we're here to help. Exactly. They're like, oh, I don't need that. Guys don't do that. My wife don't care. They, My girlfriend don't care. Uh, guess what? Saying, saying they guys might. don't do that is like saying superheroes don't do that thing. You know? Right, <laughs> right. It's like saying Batman doesn't do that. <laughs> My point is, is that maybe your partner would love it if you would do that, but they're too polite to say so. That's all I'm saying. Trim it up, guys. It's good for you. It's good for them. It's good for everybody, and it's good for the show. So again, go to manscaped.com. Use that promo code Batscape. That's a true story, and it made me. It made my day. I thought it was so funny. There's somebody else on Twitter. I can't remember who it was. And again, I won't say names just for the sake of it, but I actually, I do remember who it was, but even they put on, on Twitter, I think they were like listening to, um, you know, Brendan overshare on Holy Backcast, uh, you know, with the Manscaped and yet here I am on the Manscaped website. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, hey, so, so you, you guys think Brendan honest. overshares. I know way more about Brendan than any of you do. And I didn't even have to enter a promo code for it. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. so anyway guys again check out manscaped.com buy one of their packages they're really great 20 percent off batscaped please and thank you and not only are you getting something for yourself you're supporting the show and we thank you for that um another thing i gotta thank you guys for is that the other day no yesterday yesterday yeah uh popped up in my memories it was the anniversary of the very first episode of Holy Backcast. Thought it was worth a mention. Like, I, I didn't remember when we launched it, honestly. It's been so long. But it popped up in my memories, and I was like, holy shit, really? So, yeah, on February 11th uh, of 2014 was the very first episode of Holy Backcast. And I was like, oh, my God, that's crazy. I can't believe it's been eight freaking years of this show. That's nuts. Uh, and then I shared it on the Twitter uh, feed and you guys were so awesome, so supportive. And so I, I do appreciate everybody who said something very sweet and supportive about congrats and, and all of that. I can't believe we've been doing this show for eight years. And Jamie, you were in on the ground floor. You were my, my co-host on that very first episode where we just sort of shot the breeze about Batman. Yeah. It, it felt like one of the conversations we always had about Batman, only on a microphone. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah. eight freaking years. This is nuts. Doesn't, it doesn't seem quite real, but man, that's... I'd say that's a pretty solid accomplishment. I'm going to go ahead and pat us on the back, guys. That, that's a pretty good accomplishment. I mean, it, yeah, it, it's not nothing. That is a long freaking run. Uh, 330 episodes. This is 331, so 331 episodes in eight years. And... So cool. I, you know, it, it was on a whim because we were having fun with the real fans uh, show and we, f we found ourselves no matter what, always coming back to Batman. And so I was like, why don't we just do a Batman show too? Why not two? And now I'm like, why not eight? Why not nine shows? All the shows. 
Uh, and yeah, so it just started as a whim. I like threw together a logo. And when I shared it with you guys, Brendan's like, I've never seen that logo. And I'm like, yeah, because it lasted like two, three episodes before my dear friend, Brian Crosby was, who is an artist and he's very talented. He's like, I'll, I'll make a logo for you. And I'm like, thank you. Cause the one I threw together was like on some app and it was done in five minutes because I was like, eh, who cares? You know, nobody's going to listen anyway. Uh, so I just can't believe eight years and not only like, has it been tons of fun, but like the people that it connects us with, you know, obviously the two of you and the people we've gotten to talk to on the show and all the different guests we've had over the years and the people who we interact with out there in internet land on Twitter or on Facebook. And then the fact that like, there are thousands of others we never hear from, which that's the weirdest part. You know, like I feel like of the people I know who listen to the show, it's like, I don't know, a hundred people, the, the ones who actually we interact with, you know, at least electronically, but based on the show, there there are a lot more than that that just politely listen and don't say a word. And to no, them, I've, I've never told you till now, but I think it's time you knew. Is that you? I, down, I download this episode several thousand times. I know, appreciate the, the that. Show. I'll every, take every it. Episode. Just to boost the numbers. I, I just wanted to make you feel better. It's really only those hundred people. Okay, well, you know, that's fine. That's fine. I liked living in my illusion. I don't know why you had to shatter it for me. Well, because it's yeah, the, been eight years, it's just time you knew the truth. Yeah, the guy who doesn't want to be on Twitter's got like several thousand fake accounts that he just downloads. Yep. I well, that's the reason Twitter. I'm not on Twitter anymore is it takes me so long to download the show that many times that I just don't have time to do it. <laughs> that's that's how you Hurts spend all your spare time. Fingers. Yeah. That's fine. I hope you tell the kids too. Hey, just download Holy Backass. Don't care if you listen. Just download it. We got to make Andy feel like he's doing something that anyone cares what he's doing. There, there are people that do weird stuff like that. I mean, there are people who buy Instagram followers. So, yeah, but. there, There's a very unscrupulous car dealer here in town that has a trash reputation. But if you read his Google reviews, they're good because he tells every employee to tell every family member and everybody they know that every five star positive Google review or rating that is left is 25 bucks in their pocket. Wow. Yeah. Jesus. Well, anyway, my point is, happy eight years, guys. There are no two finer gents I I would rather celebrate with. I appreciate both of you guys, and I appreciate everybody out there who listens, whether it's uh, loudly or quietly, whether we've ever heard from you or or, or you you tweet me every day. all the different people who have joined the show over the years. I'm, I'm intentionally not naming names because I will leave a name off and then I will feel bad about it later. So it's best to name no names, but you know who you are. If you've been on the show talking about you, thank you guys. But yeah, happy, happy eight years. High fives all around. Cheers, mates. Cheers. Congrats. We did it. And oh my gosh, boy, is it worth it. That feels unnatural saying cheers while you're holding water. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, you want to talk about a little news? Yes, let's. First news is a little sad news, but, you know, such is life. Uh, the first one is a little bit of a goodbye, and that is uh, the passing of Brian Augustin. He passed away about a week and a half ago, and I, 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 I didn't miss it, but we haven't talked about it on the show. I guess we'll say that. And he uh, was an editor for The Flash for years in the 90s, but most... Uh, notably for this show, he also wrote Gotham by Gaslight. And then he also wrote the sequel, Master of the Future, which I honestly don't remember if I've ever read. But he passed away of a stroke on February 1st uh, at 67 years old. So it's a it's a sad thing, but Gotham by Gaslight is a landmark book. And it 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 helps a little bit to know that his name and his work will live forever because... Gotham, as long as people read comics, Gotham by Gaslight is always going to be one that Batman fans read. Without doubt. It has the reputation for a reason. Yeah. So it's historic and it's a shame 67 is way too young, but uh, he leaves behind him a really impressive body of work. And again, a landmark Batman book that uh, has become, I think, an immortal classic. I think that's fair. So moving forward to TV, this was something I had completely forgotten about because the news came out and then it just sort of went away and I moved on with my life. But you remember that the CW is doing a show called Gotham Knights? 
No. I do remember, yes. I, I, I remembered as soon as the, it, it reared its head again, but I had forgotten up until now. But yeah, the CW, they did get a pilot order uh, for Gotham Knights, and this is the log line. It says, In the wake of Bruce Wayne's murder, his rebellious adopted son forges an unlikely alliance with the children of Batman's enemies when they are all framed for killing the Cape Crusader. And as the city's most wanted criminals, this renegade band of misfits must fight to clear their names. But in a Gotham with no Dark Knight to protect it, the city descends into the most dangerous it's ever been. However, hope comes from the most unexpected of places as this team of mismatched fugitives will become its next generation of saviors. So it's uh, another Greg Berlanti production. Uh, and they are ordering it to pilot, and they have started casting. So I remember when this news came out, it was one of those, oh, okay, interesting, I wonder which characters they will use. But now, because they have started casting, we got some news about which characters they are looking to cast. Uh, The first one is that they are looking to cast a Dick Grayson. They're also looking to cast Stephanie Brown, a.k.a. Spoiler, uh, and briefly Robin. Uh, and a Batgirl. I guess she's done all three. Uh, it's not clear if Dick Grayson will be Robin or Nightwing. Uh, and then they are also casting Harper Rowe, Bluebird. Do you guys know Bluebird from the comics? No. Yeah, she's she's more recent, within the past few years. Um, so she will be in there. And then some of the kids of the villains, it sounds like Julia Pennyworth... Lucius Fox's daughter and the child of, quote, the most dangerous man in Gotham. But it's unclear what that means. Interesting. So anyway, very interesting. I wanted to get your guys' thoughts. So, Jamie, what do you think about Gotham Knights as a TV show? I mean, on paper, from the description you read, I don't know that it's anything that I'm particularly interested in. But if Peacemaker's taught me anything, just because it doesn't sound like something I want to watch doesn't mean it isn't going to be something I'd love. So, you know, maybe I'll check it out when it hits HBO Max or something. Mm, mm-hmm. Kind of so- kind of sounds like that. You remember that uh, animated movie that came out, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, whatever it was, uh, called Next Avengers, The Heroes of Tomorrow? Oh, God, yeah, I totally do. I really dig that movie. Not a lot of people seem to, but I really liked it. So it kind of sounds like a darker live-action premise on that, really. Mm-hmm, yeah. Which isn't a bad thing. Brendan, how do you feel? I I mean, I'll give it a go. Um, Won't you always? Yeah, well, I'll try anything once. Um, (laughs) Sometimes twice if the price is right. Twice, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But no, you know, I I think I said in one of the recent episodes, I've kind of dropped off a a few of the CW shows just because of time and life now. Um, and, And in some cases, quality. But you know, I'll definitely give it a shot, and and if it if it works and I enjoy it, well, I'll stick with it. If not, well, it's a thing that exists. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I know I know Batman the big screen and all that kind of stuff. I get it, but it's just kind of like how many Batman shows are they going to do now without Batman? Yeah, like all of them. You know, I mean, f sake, we've got a full on Superman show on TV, and it's friggin' awesome. Like people can know like people know the difference now like i yeah it's you know because we've got what this potentially we've got titans i mean batman is kind of in titans but not really <laughs> right um i don't know Bruce wayne certainly is batman yeah. very argument arguable point gotham batwoman you know the two spin-offs from the batman that's what that's six shows it's like just friggin' make a Batman show. Like, just do it. Just, just do. It. I'm, I don't want to swear, but I, I really want to. But yeah, just do the friggin' thing. Like, it won't hurt your movies. Yeah, let's do the damn thing. You're good. You've got. You've already got two Batman in the movies. So what the hell? Yeah, just do it. Yeah, three actually. Oh yeah, for now. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, I, so when I heard Gotham Knights as a TV show, I went, oh, that's cool. I'm, I'm into that idea. But the very first <laughs> couple words of the log line of after yeah. Bruce Wayne's murder, I'm like, what? Mm. you're already you starting at a Bat- deficit. Yeah. Got to take Batman off the table. Yeah. Like, like I mean, and, and why, and it's not even that I need it to be a Batman show. I just, 
Bruce Wayne's dead? Like, that's just a heck of a place to start your show. You know, like, why can't it be after Bruce Wayne's disappearance or something like that? Like, I don't mind a Gotham Knights show where they have to step up in Batman's absence. But like to start with the death of Batman is just already I'm like, I'm not I'm not into that. As far as the overall premise, though, of bringing some of these uh, different characters, some more well known than others into their own show and to have adventures in Gotham. I'm interested. I'm willing to give it a shot, especially if it's going to be Dick Grayson leading the charge. I do like Stephanie Brown. I think this is the first time we have a live action Stephanie Brown. Or was there one in Titans? I want to say maybe there was one in Titans. Was there? I can't remember. Anyway, um, maybe perhaps. And then Harper Rowe, that was unexpected, but all right, that's cool. It's a, a, a more recent character getting their chance. So I am intrigued by it, but the log line doesn't inspire a lot of confidence yet. But like you said, Jamie, hey, we weren't feeling the Peacemaker, and I think the Peacemaker is freaking great, and I'm loving it. So what do I know? Sometimes these things pan out, and they're a nice surprise, and I hope that's the case here. This is one that I'm just cautiously watching, and we'll see how it develops, but it's not one where I'm like, Oh God, I hope, man, I hope they make it. I can't wait. And it's not one where I'm like, boo, this is going to suck. I'm sort of in between. Fair enough. Speaking of DC on TV, either one of you, you guys, Brendan, I think you have watched it. Andy, I don't know if you have Reacher on Amazon Prime. Oh, yes, I have. I, I only bring it up because it's it's a Smallville reunion show. Yeah, there is actually. I have not watched it yet, but... Reacher is not a DC thing, is it? No, but it's no. got. Um, oh, okay. Uh, Just because Alan, Alan Richardson. Richardson. And Christ- okay. I and, thought uh, I thought Christian you were saying Coop it was a DC Smallville. property. I'm like, no, I don't think. No, that. no, no, no. It's the the girl that played Lana. Is it Kristen Crook? Is that how you say her name? On yeah. Smallville. Yeah. Yeah. She's in it too. And it's set in a town not unlike Smallville, actually. Okay. Yeah. What he said. Yeah, but not for nothing. I tell you what. Like I was. Well, I get the spoiler alert, I guess. Um, I was pissed when what they did to Hawk in the last season of, of Titans. But if this is the outcome of that, if the outcome of him not being on that show anymore is Reacher, I am all for it. That show was friggin' awesome. I enjoyed it a lot. But anyway. Nice. Well, that's good to hear. I'd heard good things about it, and I really like him. I just haven't given no, it a shot. Really Th- this is I the really best hope he's it's ever his been. star making turn because like he's a great actor and he look he it's not that he's never had work but he's still to a lot of people he's still an unknown commodity yeah um and i really hope this is a star making turn for him because he's really good in it i think it is because amazon's been pushing like crazy for the last couple of weeks and it's their number one watch show right now so well, it's already been greenlit for a second season i and hope there's, so what, 20 there's 26 something books that they can do like there's a shitload they can do with it. So, yeah, good good on him. It's really good to see him getting some love. No. The show ain't perfect, but it's a damn good time. I'd recommend it to anybody out there. Cool. Well, great. Um, speaking of Batgirls, do we want to talk about what just hit? Why not? Well, I guess so. Breaking I mean, news. I, it, it is, it is, and I guess it's not spoilery. We knew he was going to be in the movie, right? So I guess it's okay. Because Batgirl is, you know, shooting in earnest right now, and we've gotten so many set picks and spy picks since they started production of Batgirl herself. I think last week we saw, uh, oh my God, I was, I was gonna keep, I keep thinking J. Jonah Jameson. That is incorrect. Um, Jim Gordon, J.K. Simmons. Jim Gordon. Same difference, but you know what I'm saying. I'm like, I could not get J. Jonah Jameson out of my head. Um, <laughs> Jim Gordon, we see him on set. You know, so you're starting to see all these characters pop up. And right as we started recording, some pictures came out uh, that Batman is on set. So I don't think it's a spoiler that Batman's in the movie, right? We know he's in the movie. It had already been confirmed. <laughs> That Michael Keaton is going to be Batman in the movie. I do think that there was a question of, is he going to be in the suit? And now we know he is. Sure do. And I think that's the only reason we, we, because I know we don't often talk about set picks, but I think that's the main reason is because it's the first time we've seen him in the suit since it's been announced he was coming back to the role. And 
like I said before we started recording, like they should have just released a damn official photo because Batgirl set pics have been everywhere for like the last month. So they had to know that someone was going to get a photo of him. And it's, you know, it's a little disappointing that this is our first look, but still. Well, and it's crazy to me that The Flash filmed and wrapped and in post-production and we didn't get a single image of Keaton in costume for that. They managed to keep that under wraps very successfully. And yeah, like you say, our first our first real look of him in costume is Batgirl. And it's a spy pick. I yeah. wonder if that means he's never going to leave the cave in the Flash movie. God, I don't I hope know. Not. I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I always go back to that concept art of him ready for battle, like right there with the Flash. That's not in the cave. I mean, I guess it could have been. I guess someone could invade the cave. But I think that he's going to be out and about. I hope so. But, I mean, they're fuzzy set picks or spy picks, but it's all, I don't know, I'm, I'm excited to know he's going to suit up, of course, as always. The suit, it's a little hard to tell what it is, um, but it looks really good. It does look like the Burton era, but I can't tell if it's more 89, more return, some sort of combination of the two, But because it's a fuzzy spy pick, but... From what I can see through these, it looks awesome. I'm happy about it. it looks good. I feel like it might be something picture, new. I can't tell if he's trying to look through binoculars or drink out of a coffee cup. I don't. I don't know what's going on with that one. Yeah, but I am dis- I am disappointed about one thing: the ground is not covered in snow. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess that's true. And even though I detest that stuff in my real life, watching it in a movie that's taking place at Christmas would be helpful. I mean, we're getting dinosaurs in the snow in June, yo. Right. So more Batman in the snow, more dinosaurs in the snow, more snow in our movies, less in Jamie's driveway. Preach. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, exciting. I, I, I'm so psyched for Batgirl and this is just another reason to be excited. Yeah. Anything? No, nothing else? Yeah, no, no I, I agree. Mean, if you're into Batgirl, I guess. I mean, I, I don't know anybody that was asking for this movie or anything, but, you know, if you're into that sort of thing, yeah, I can see where this might excite one. I do agree with you, Brendan. It would, I mean, it would have been nice to get an official pick, especially if it was a pick of him with Batgirl, you know? So that way the focus or, remains or, on Batgirl. If you just, I know we'll get to it, but if you just dropped like a second s- screenshot into that World Needs Heroes video. Yeah, because we got a first, we got our first look at quite a few characters in that. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, why not then? You know, why just chuck it in there and then the next day? Oh, look, he's out on the street filming. Oh, who gives a shit? We got this little snippet of footage yesterday. Yeah, no, that's true. Well, exciting times. More Batman coming our way, but we've got the Batman coming our way before we know it. It is so close. And uh, they announced earlier this week that they were going to do advanced screenings in IMAX. Matt Reeves tweeted it out. And so uh, tickets went on sale a few days ago. Can't remember which day, but it's funny. I was texting with our pal Hunter and he's like, oh, you know, are you are you online waiting for the tickets? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm going to try to get them as soon as they go on sale. And for here, I think it was at noon, 9 a.m. Pacific time. So, yeah, noon here. And Hunter's like, OK, well, I'll try to get tickets, too. And you try to get tickets and whoever gets tickets, then we'll be good to go. So we made this this pact. And so tickets went on sale for the advanced IMAX screening and we both got tickets. No problem. <laughs> And I was like, oh, so which ones do we keep? And we kept mine because I picked a theater that was closer to us. It was a little less of a drive. And he's like, oh, I'll just return mine. So it was just funny because we were like ready to go, like, you know, like buying concert tickets in the old day. And it was it was not an issue. Um, But I know that I got my tickets to go with Hunter and hopefully my wife. Hopefully my wife will be feeling up to it because at that point we should have a baby. Um, So I got my tickets for March 1st. I think, Jamie, you got your tickets for March 1st. Confirmed, I do. So, are you going? And I'm going to have to sit next to a total stranger, which I'm not pleased about. But it's a school night for my kids, and they can't be staying out till eleven o'clock at night on a school night. I was going to say, are you going solo? Yeah. Oh, all right. A little date night for one. I hope you get lucky. I mean, the the whole hole in the bottom of the popcorn bucket works way easier when you're not worried about the <laughs> stuff. You know? 
<laughs> and with those neatly shaved balls, it's it's a oh, pleasure. God. <laughs> <laughs> that way you're not flossing while you're eating the popcorn. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, it's like midway through the show. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember we messaged Brendan and we're like, Hey, are you guys doing this? And he's like, well, we're doing it on the second. Cause it's, you know, time, time zones is the same day. Uh, so you got your tickets for March 2nd. Sure did. So, yep. We got the IMAX screenings. Um, it's funny cause every Batman fan I know has tickets on March 1st. I don't know anyone who got left out at that point. Um, it, they did eventually sell out the next day. But it seems like everybody who wanted them got them. So we're all going on March 1st. So great. Knocks a couple days off the waiting for it. Looking forward to it. But it was one of those things where I texted Catherine. And I'm like, so I got us tickets for Batman on March 1st. I really hope we can go. And she's like, yeah, me too. If this damn baby will get out of me. I'm like, okay, agreed. So that is the hope. Um, along that lines, we had some advanced, uh, advanced box office tracking numbers for opening weekend of the Batman. So box office pro has their, uh, projection between 135 and $185 million and Forbes had theirs at $85 million. That seems to be a bit of a discrepancy. So yeah, if you combine the two. The projections are between 85 and $185 million for opening weekend, which, yeah, that's a big range. So I'm going to make my prediction. Like me being a meteorologist and saying tomorrow it's going to be somewhere between absolute zero and 212. Well, I was going to say, I'm making my prediction right now, is that opening weekend of the Batman, it's going to make between $1 and a million jillion dollars. And I have a hunch I'll be right. Seems, le- seems legit. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, tickets have already gone on sale for opening weekend. I know a lot of our fellow bat fans have already bought like three or four tickets for the first day or two. Uh, I have not, cause I'm just waiting to see what's going on with the world of the baby. Like, I just feel like I can't commit. I bought the advanced one and then I'm like, mm, now let's wait until the baby's born and then I'll figure out, uh, when I'm going again, we'll figure it out. But yeah, well, it's. I'm going I on have Wednesday never night, won. and then I know I'll be going again at least on the Saturday because a bunch of friends who I invited on the Wednesday night couldn't come because of work and everything, which I get. Um, but they're all free on the Saturday, and I'm like, well, I'm not waiting till Saturday, for, especially for a Batman movie. So <laughs> oh, I'm going, um, and then yeah, I'll go again with everyone on the Saturday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I don't understand the people that that buy all those tickets up front for a movie that they've never seen before. Because even though you really think that you're going to like something, that doesn't mean it is. The example I'll give is my Star Wars crew that I went and saw almost all those movies with would take the day, we'd always go to the midnight premiere because this was before they had the, you know, the 6 p.m. the previous day. It was always 12.01 on the, you know, premiere day. And they would take the day off the following day and buy tickets to every single showing that day. So here, here these guys are sitting around That's with like insane. seven tickets to Star Wars in their pocket. And the la- the one time they almost convinced me to do that with them, guess what movie it was? The Last Jedi. Oh. Boy, am I glad I didn't jump on that boat with them, so... I'm just saying, any uh, I understand you can get Fandango credits and all that other stuff if you decide not to use those tickets, but just the same. That's kind of kind of optimistic, if you ask me. I well, couldn't do that. Like even for something that I absolutely adore, and even if I did love the movie when I first saw it seven times in a day, Jesus. Yeah, that's that's, that's hardcore. I did. I mean, I did something similar for Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, but it wasn't to that extreme. I think Dark Knight it was three times in the first twenty four hours. I think that's the most I ever did. Um, but I distinctly remember back in nineteen ninety eight having tickets for Godzilla uh, on opening night and then on preview night and going twice because I was so sure how much I was gonna love it. And now it's a guilty pleasure. But at the time, I sat through it the first time and I was like, oh shit, I have to go see this again tomorrow. <laughs> thank you for proving my point here sir um oh our friend paul shirey that happened to him uh with armageddon 
because I like, Armageddon. I like Armageddon too, and he likes Armageddon. But that summer, this is when we were going to college together. He was so excited for Armageddon, like to the level that we would be for The Dark Knight. You know, like he he was all wow. in on Armageddon. He could not freaking wait for Armageddon. Like he was dying for it, right? Well, so I mean, he likes Michael Bay. He likes Bruce Willis. I mean, that, that yeah. makes sense. So we got tickets to go to like the first showing on opening night, but then he got tickets with a different group of friends for the next showing. So like back to back showings. And he's like, Oh, it's going to be my Ugh. favorite movie of the year. So, and then we get out of, we get out of it the first time. I was like, what'd you think? And he's like, uh. and he's like, it was a rough watch the second time. And now again, much like Godzilla 98, which ironically same year, um, much like that, the years have you know pass and you kind of just accept it for what it is and it's fun and it's a good time but at the time when you're like oh that was a bit of a letdown you don't want to go right back in and watch the letdown again and this is in no way me saying that this movie is going to be a letdown i'm just saying that's that's risky and and not so much with again you can get the fandango refund for credits and all that other stuff but yeah i mean I, 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 I respect I, the confidence, I but then, I mean, all these people have already said that this is the best Batman movie ever made. So why wouldn't they? Well, it's got the they, best they, score. They already they know. That. They already know right. this is the Maybe. best Batman movie ever made. So, yeah. Maybe but, they're right. But since I don't know that for myself, I'm buying one ticket to one showing and we'll see what happens for the rest. Because my tired ass also knows in 45 days it's going to be on HBO. So. Yeah, well, that's true. Uh, I mean, I'm sure I will go again opening weekend. Uh, I just don't know when yet because again, I'm just kind of waiting to see what my new life is going to look like. But you're, 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 I was going to say you're no lo- you're no longer in charge of that. So yeah, exactly. Don't really you know. Won't be very shortly. Um, but I, I mean, the projections for opening weekend, even if it is the low end at 85 million dollars, that's still really good, especially while we're still dealing with COVID, um, 185 would be insanely huge. I'm not holding my breath for that. Um, But if it does, that would be the biggest opening weekend for a Batman movie ever, because right now, that is held by BVS, 166. That was a $100 million movie, so that'd be great. Yeah, so we shall see. It'll be interesting. What do you guys think? Okay, yeah, I want to to hear your, your predictions. I'm putting you on the spot. Jamie, opening weekend prediction. You're really good at this. Yeah, I'm the best. $11, because I know I have bought my ticket, and that's... No, wait, my ticket was $21. That's right, because it's IMAX. Because IMAX, night. man, oh. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Will they tally that opening night with the opening weekend stuff, or no? Uh, yeah, usually they put pre they lump previews in. Because, I mean, there's a lot of screenings happening that opening night. Would I count my town? They're going to do what? Thirty-seven screenings? Did we count? Oh, really? Just? Oh no! Wait, that that was the March first one. That wasn't the, the the preview screening. That's right. So they got thirty-seven screen, thirty-seven screenings on that that initial Thursday night before the the opening, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to say probably somewhere in the vicinity of I'm going to say one twenty-seven. Okay. All right, Brendan. See, I am. I have no idea when it comes to that sort of stuff. And over here is completely different. And I mean, it's, it's got a, hasn't it, is it got like a global opening? It's like, is everyone getting it around the same time? I think so. Yeah. For the most part. I mean, do you, do you are you guys looking at just domestic or are you looking yeah, at global? Dom- domestic. Like, domestic. See, I don't know. I don't live there. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's I, I honestly don't know. I'll just kind of go around Jamie's figure because I, you know, you're looking at numbers in a country I don't live in, so I have no idea. Yeah. Don't you price is right, me. You're not going to undercut me by a dollar or <laughs> overcut me by a dollar. No. No, uh-uh. You, you put your own number out there. You're not going to say 125 999 or something. Let's say, okay, I don't know if this is a ridiculous number or not because I don't follow box office like you guys do, but, like, I don't know, 180... Okay. 200 worldwide well it's definitely going to do that worldwide because it's Didn't spider-man mid 100 million opening weekend let me look just i want to say it did stand by no way i think it did like it did almost uh end game numbers yeah which was like, like 200 
million opening week. Yes. Like, is that just in the States, 200 million? Yeah. Yes. 260 million That's just in the States for No Way Home. Yeah. So people will go out and see a movie right now is the point. The question is whether or not this movie has the draw that Spider-Man did. It won't. It ain't going to do 260, so but... No, 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 no. I... I'm I'm just thinking, you know, if it if it does that 180 to 200 number, then there's a lot of really pent up excitement, and people are just dying to get in and see this thing. And quite frankly, I I don't feel that energy from anybody I'm talking to. Now, granted, that's not, you know, geek circle talk necessarily. That's like people I know in real life and and what have you. I I just don't see it pulling down those kind of numbers. Now, that's not to say that the movie won't get great word of mouth and generate that in, so it gives it you know, some longer legs for some, for some extra power, maybe toward even the end of that opening weekend or, or something like that. But I, I just, I don't feel like it's strong enough to, to hit those kind of numbers. The sequel, if, it, if this one's that well received, I think the sequel easily sails into that kind of territory, but this, this could I, be I don't like a feel, Batman begins. Yeah. I'm, I'm not feeling it. I'm sorry. Hmm. I mean, I think there's a lot of anticipation, especially because there hasn't been a must see movie in theaters since Spider-Man. Uh, and there won't be after this for another month or two. So I feel like Batman has the the landscape pretty much to himself, which will benefit. And I think that a lot of people haven't been out to the theaters since Spider-Man, and it will take Batman to get them back. It isn't going to do Spider-Man numbers, but I think that the tracking of 135 to 185 is not off base. I I do feel like it's going to come where come somewhere in the middle, like 160 maybe which is right around what Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises did. It's right in that same neighborhood. To me, even though those were 10 years ago, which is crazy, I can't believe that we haven't had a solo Batman movie in theaters for 10 years. Um, But even with the 10 years of inflation, that feels like right around the the right neighborhood to me. But we'll see. And what would you think worldwide? Oh, geez, I don't know. I'd have to look at how many... I don't know how many territories and countries it's opening in concurrently okay because yeah like when you guys talk box office like i find it interesting but it's just not something i follow um and like i said not being in you know in a different country it it makes it a little less interesting as well i'm sure i'm sure i'm I'm not saying this to be any kind of a smart ass or anything but i would think if australia is opening the same day as the u.s pretty much every major market is I mean, I think most like probably will, but I, I don't have that in front of me, so I don't know. But yeah. remember, BVS... If, that, if that's the case, I, I really think it's going to clock somewhere between five and $600 million the first weekend. Oh, God, no. No way. With all those no way combined? Mm-mm. BVS, when it came out in 2016, it for just a quick minute had like the biggest worldwide release ever it didn't last long but for a minute and it was like 466 worldwide but they did that on purpose and released it literally everywhere so they could have that record so if you think this is going to do look, more not, than that i don't i don't i have a hard time believing that not for nothing and not wanting to you know to, to, to get into any sort of any sort of argument but the other thing i i'm assuming it's the same i i don't know but just like in australia for example i only only vaccinated people can go to the cinema you know i mm-hmm. mean these are these are little things that can impact you know totals and stuff if 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 a percentages of population physically can't like aren't allowed to go and see it like you know it's not just a free-for-all like it used to be well here it's a free-for-all everybody can go do whatever the hell they want with absolutely no ramifications whatsoever but in los angeles you have to wear a mask prove vaccinations and all that other shit to set foot in a movie theater mm. or at least specific change because Mick Garris was just talking about it on his podcast like a week or two ago but in That's Fort Wayne, Indiana like. in Fort Wayne, Indiana I can walk in there in a string bikini and a smile and they're going to let me <laughs> in that theater without having to show jack shit about a vaccination please do <laughs> but I won't because in March 1st it's still going to be frozen ass cold here so. <laughs> but yeah but you, you see my point though like these are little things that you know can impact yeah, the numbers. yeah, yeah. So, like okay, so... Like Spider-Man, for example, I, like, the restrictions didn't come in until, I think it was three days after Spider-Man was released. 
you know. Yeah. So these so, are all things that you need to take into account. I need to correct myself. BVS, its opening worldwide weekend was 424, which was a record at the time for the biggest opening world biggest worldwide opening for a superhero film. And not interesting. And not to go down there, but the fact that it like barely doubled that is crazy. Mm. So Anyway, I will find out. We'll find out in a few weeks. But I do think that, you know, be, people are hungry for another event film and they haven't had that since Spider-Man, which was Christmas. And so I think that Batman is certainly poised for that. I think there is enough interest around it. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But WB is out there selling it. They know that it's a it's a big one. I've seen people who are like, look at all the showings of the Batman on opening night. And I'm like, well, what the hell else are they going to show? There's nothing. There's nothing else out. Like, of course, <laughs> of course that there's yeah. every screen they've got is going to be dedicated to Batman opening weekend. Of course it is. Um, but WB is not just selling the Batman. They're also selling their 2022 slate. So uh, this popped up yesterday and uh, DC Warner Brothers, they shared a minute long sizzle trailer not just for one film, but for their four big live action theatrical superhero films for the year. So this was a sizzle called The World Needs Heroes. I'm sure y'all have seen it. We've already mentioned it once. This was a really nice surprise that we got yesterday. And what's funny is the day before The Rock tweeted out that um, he's like, oh, there's like a minute, a minute trailer coming tomorrow. And we all thought he meant a Black Adam trailer. At least I did when I saw that. And then it turns out, well, yes, there's Black Adam in here, but there is also the Batman and the Flash and Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. So we get this cool one minute long sizzle uh, selling all four of those movies, the big theatrical ones. And we get a lot of footage of the Batman. I feel like we don't get any new footage of the Batman in this. It's all stuff that we had seen in previous trailers. But... We get our very first footage of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, but it's only two quick shots. It's one shot of Aquaman in the dark blue stealth suit in the desert, uh, and then a a shot of him in the classic suit on the throne of Atlantis. We get some new... Which needs to be my phone wallpaper. What? I said, which needs to be my phone wallpaper. Well, I'm sure you could find an HD screen grab and, and make it that. Probably so. Um, There is also uh, some new footage from The Flash. So most of it is from the teaser that we saw, but we get one new amazing shot of Ezra Miller in the new suit, looking right into the camera, just getting ready to take off where the shades come down over his eyes. And then we get a lot of new footage from Black Adam. I think that is the one they give us the most of. So we get some really cool new shots of The Rock as Black Adam, fully in costume, something tragic's happening, and he says something about uh, he was going to make the world a better place, which is why his son saved his life, something like that. And as you mentioned earlier, we get the reveal of the Justice Society. So not only do we see Black Adam himself, we finally get to see Hawkman, Adam Smasher, Dr. Fate, and Cyclone and they look fantastic so with this we get the you know the buildup of all four films and then the world needs heroes and then it names off all four the batman black adam the flash aquaman and the lost kingdom and it says only in theaters so uh this was a really cool surprise that we got yesterday it was total geek out uh jamie hadn't even seen it at first because he's so off social media i had to send him the link because i was like oh well now we got something to talk about and jamie goes what are you talking about and i'm like oh let me send you, let me send you the link um but the yeah, i world... don't get good reception under this rock you know i that's okay i don't blame you so anyway jamie what'd you think magnificent i've watched it i don't know 10 or 12 times and every single time it just sends chills right up my spine i think it's a wonderful sizzle i think they did a great job with it and they they gave us just enough to give us a taste but not too much as to overstay its welcome or or what have you uh you know i I wish i could have had a little bit more aquaman maybe seen a little bit of creature or something like that but you know they're they're still you know working on stuff with that so i'm I'm not 
you know, mad at that. I, I like that we got as much Black Adam as we did. You know, so a Hawkman look, and Doctor Fate. Oh, Lord have mercy, how good do they look? So good. Uh, Seconded. Yep. Uh, Amazing. And, you know, I I don't know Adam Smasher or Cyclone, I, so I I can't really say either way. They they look cool to me, but you know, as far as like the other two that I mentioned, they look practically right off of a page. So I would imagine these two do, but I, I don't really know. Um, the rock looks great as black Adam, as we all anticipated that he would, you know, this is really the first real footage that we have of him in that costume where he's not got the robe draped over him or they're trying to be coy about it or anything else. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I like to finally have that that we've been asking for. I, I do think it's, disappointing but understandable at the same time that you know the flash gives us that little voiceover from keaton where he talks about you know you can go anywhere and and anywhere in any timeline why why focus on saving this one or, or something to that effect mm -hmm. but they they don't show him and i i get the reason why is they already have a batman that they're promoting with this snippet they probably don't want to risk getting people confused by having a second completely different batman in there yeah so, I mean, I, I get that move. Um, yeah, I mean, most yeah, of the footage in this is from the Batman, which makes sense because it's coming in three weeks. So you do you don't want to dilute that message. But I do think it's pretty awesome that they're like, oh, but there's so much more to look forward to this year. And again, to get a couple new glimpses was such a nice surprise. But I think you're right about that's why we didn't see Keaton is because it's like, well, no, we have a new Batman solo film coming out in days so that's we don't want any distraction from that yeah you know brett brennan talked about it would have been nice to get like a a shot at the end of that of like maybe him and batgirl together but again it's the same thing they, they don't want to cross wires on that and and run a trailer that has two different batman in it you know if you're if you're doing hall h where the room is just in the know about what's happening it's easier to get away with that. But as Andy mentioned, this very well could be a, a WB Super Bowl spot. So you're you're going out to, you know, I don't know how many people watch the Super Bowl, 100 million, whatever it is. It's a lot of people that they may not quite grasp what people who read comics and keep up with this kind of stuff do. So, yeah, I do believe mar marketing the two movies by themselves would be no problem. I think trying to market them together would get people a little bit awry i suppose i do believe this is a super bowl spot because i'm sure they talked about it and they were like well do we promote the batman it's coming out next and uh, someone very smart went if we're paying for the super bowl let's promote them all i think it's a brilliant marketing decision to go let's let's market our slate let's celebrate all four of these huge superhero movies we've got coming in the same year on the biggest TV event of the year. I think it's brilliant. So smart. Yes, I like again, it's mostly you can you can count the footage by the order that they come out in. It's the most footage from the Batman, then Black Adam, which is coming next, then The Flash, and then Aquaman, which is just those two shots. Um, but I think it's so smart that if they're going to to commit the money to put on a minute long Super Bowl spot, why waste it not waste it but why just focus on one when you can sell all four i think it's so smart yeah Bank i don't know what the spot's running this year but i would imagine a 60 second trailer is probably going to run you between 12 and 15 million i'm just stabbing in the dark there but... brendan um uh, well i second what jamie said about um hawkman and dr fate they look awesome um and possibly my favorite part of the the thing oh the flash that shot of the flash was pretty wicked too actually mm -hmm. um which is funny because on what only like 24 hours prior twitter was losing its mind and shitting on the flash movie based on like one grainy photo of like ezra's new costume that really didn't give much detail and then we see see this and it's like man that thing looks sleek as i reckon it's awesome mm -hmm. um yeah, I, it's it's really sort of hard to piggyback. I will say, and I don't mean this in a negative way, and I I definitely don't mean this in like any sort of like restore the Snyderverse way or anything. But there was a little bit of a feel of like one of these things is not like the other. 
if that makes sense. Like, the Batman, to me, really stood out as different to the other films. Um, you know, like, the, the other films felt like more of what we know, because, I mean, aside from Black Adam, because it's a new property, but it's still, you know, it's set in that world with Shazam and everything, like... It, it felt like part of a universe, whereas the Batman, and obviously by design, doesn't. Um, but again, that's that's not a criticism. It's just for me, seeing all that footage together, it really stood out to me as as, as being separate. Um, but no, I think it was really cool. Like, and like you said, Andy, it, it's... I've never seen a trailer like it before, you know, that's not for... A comic con or or in more recent years fandom something like that it's and yeah for it to be a super bowl spot like you said if they're spending the money um it's it's really well marketed like shit promote it all like why not mm -hmm. uh on the world's biggest tv stage so yeah i i really really enjoyed it it was a nice surprise and it's got me psyched for what's coming out this year well, even more psyched because I was already psyched. So, but yeah. actually, one thing I did want to mention: does it? I don't really understand why, but do you guys feel that they've played really coy with any marketing stuff for Black Adam? I, I don't. Like, Outside no, of social mean. media and geek circles, yes. Like, well, I mean, you know, first fandom, yeah, we got the the the. Um, the artwork because they hadn't filmed anything yet but then you know last fandom we we got like what a 30 second little thing um they they played coy with the costume reveal for the longest time like yeah did i mean didn't we have a whole conversation about with, that i don't yeah but that's sort of, i don't that's understand your question i'm like, confused well i don't know i just feel that they've thrown this footage into this thing but we still haven't seen a trailer and the movie's coming in what how many months like they've got to release a trailer in the next couple of weeks surely to be attached to the batman i would think so especially after what we saw here yeah 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 that, that's what i was sort of getting at is just like okay we know it's coming and the rock has talked it up for years and you've played coy with all these reveals and everything it's like just give us a friggin trailer mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean like it's 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 i, I feel like it's overdue Sure. And I, well, and I fully expect that there will be one before the Batman. It would be silly not to. Mm. And and again, maybe it's that. And we talked about that with fandom. And I think that is maybe when we had that conversation is, is yeah, you know, that you're pushing the next big one, the Batman. And so you and so they gave us little tastes along the way. But then the Black Adam marketing machine will start once the Batman is out. Um, but I do think that. If they don't put a trailer in front of the Batman, I think that's a missed opportunity because of how many people are going to be seeing the Batman. Um, no, and it is it is interesting that our first looks at these characters is in something like this, as opposed to a trailer or an image or something. Yeah, like Yeah, I think that's what I'm sort of what I'm, what I'm sort of thinking as well is just like it's it just feels kind of odd that we haven't seen a trailer yet, but we just had these moments in this compilation video. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because you mentioned the the quick look at the flash the day before, because the day before this came out, there was a quick little thing that was posted to all of the, the different movies, social media channels. And it was just the logos with shots of the heroes. But like you said, it was kind of grainy and you didn't you didn't get it in HD. And it was it was really just hyping up this. Um, and so we saw that first. But what I do like is that I, I do agree with you about it is interesting that the Batman doesn't quite match up with them all but it was still fun to see it put in with them all um but i hear what you're saying because it's not part of that same universe but what i like is lumping them all together and really celebrating the brand of dc and it feels like it's a very intentional choice to of dc of warner brothers to really start getting the brand out there and letting that brand have more name recognition. Um, and this feels like a, a very intentional step towards that marketing of being like, Hey, everybody talks about Marvel as a brand. DC isn't quite there yet. It is to an extent, but not the way Marvel is. And we need to do better of going, this is DC. 
The world needs heroes. DC has got so much to offer. Embrace DC. And this feels like it's trying to get that out there. It feels like a very, a very different but intentional shift in how they market the films. But I like it. I'm into it. I think it's really smart. Um, I agree with you guys. Uh, and, I mean, and I've said it on Twitter and on social media. I think the Justice Society all look amazing. They look so great. Uh, I think Hawkman is probably my favorite because I just like that character anyway. He's just so cool looking and it looks like they're delivered here. I like the shots we get of Black Adam here. Uh, Dr. Fate is awesome. We don't just get Dr. Fate. We get Pierce as well talking to it looks like black adam appealing to black adam maybe getting trying to ask him to join the justice society perhaps um yeah I, there was a shot of a, a vehicle flying there did yeah. anybody catch what that was like i freeze framed it and looked at it like up close on a tv screen and like at first i thought maybe it was one of the kryptonian ships but then i got close to it i'm like no that's not right it does kind does of look like that, that but i have no idea what it's supposed to be okay like, does Justice Society have their own version of, like, the Blackbird or a Quinjet? Um, if they do, I'm not aware of it, but JSA isn't exactly one of my strong suit things. Because that almost feels like what it's supposed to be, because the shot of Cyclone, it looks like she's in it in some sort of aircraft. All right. So that was the way I, that was the way I took it. I, I have no idea. We'll, we'll find out, but... Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I think that looks great. Um, I really love the new look at the Flash suit. I think it's it looks great in that shot. I do understand the concern about the other shot where he's looking at what I assume is the Bat suit because it does look wonky in that shot, and I was a little concerned. It um, a blockhead. Yeah, and, but then the new shot, it looks great, so I hope that most of the movie it looks like that and not the other shot. But aside from that... Like, the neck down, I think it's awesome. I love it. And then the helmet, I hope, looks more like that that final shot where the uh, the lenses come down, which is such a nice touch, too. The lenses looks awesome. Because if you're running that fast, yeah, you're going to get bugs flying in your eyeballs. So you probably want to protect your eyes. Makes sense. Um, so I really dig that. And then, yeah, like, it totally makes sense. We wouldn't get more from Aquaman. I wish we would, but that's not coming out till next Christmas. So... And it just wrapped principal photography. So to even have a couple shots, I was somewhat impressed. But I'm just going to have to be patient for that. And I'm glad it was included because I can't wait for that. I did see some folks who were like... a fandom around October again. Oh, yeah, yeah. be the big pushes. Yeah. Um, And I did see some folks who were like, oh, it's a shame Batgirl was not included. And I do agree with that. But right now, Batgirl is still a HBO max. And so this one obviously is selling the theatrical experience going the, look at these four big movies exclusively, exclusively in theaters. So make your plans. Now you're not going to want to miss them. So I understand why it wouldn't quite fit in this. If this was really trying to sell, Oh, we're back in theaters in a big way. And we got these four huge superhero movies coming your way for the rest of the year. They also forgot the super pets. I know, I know exactly. So, and that's okay. It's actually a good point. If you had cut Super Pets in with this, I do think it would have been jarring. Yeah, I agree. I was just being a wise ass. Oh, I I know. I'm well aware. But it did cross my mind. I'm like, well, there's actually a fifth theatrical DC movie this year that's not in here. Super Pets. Let's go ahead and swap Super Pets with Batgirl, and that'll solve the scheduling and oversaturation problems. Well, Batgirl's still shooting. And Super Pets comes out in, what is it? Are we already in February, March, April? Three and a half months. So get these people more coffee and pay them overtime. Let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this thing is awesome. And again, I think it's a really smart marketing move by DC. The little glimpses were such nice surprises. This thing is epic. I love it. And they were also, if you noticed, every single... DC adjacent account on Twitter shared this. So like Matt Reeves shared it from his, per, his, his it Twitter, everywhere. but then the Batman movie shared it. And then DC shared it and WB shared it and black Adam shared it. And the rock himself shared it. Like they, it was coordinated. James Wan shared it on Instagram, even though he's off Twitter. Now he shared the same thing on Instagram. So like all the directors and the stars, they all shared it at the same time yesterday. Yeah. 
all the accounts for all the movies shared it. it yep. was, yeah, it was everywhere. Yeah. But I was very happy to get home and then watch it on YouTube where it was actually in, in widescreen because on your phone it's like formatted for full screen. Mm-hmm. Looks great on the big TV. Yeah, it does. It's awesome. So I have a question. There is a moment where Selena says to Bruce in this where he, she says, oh, if we don't stand up, no one will. Is that been in one of the trailers? I can't remember. I feel like it might have been in the last one. Maybe it was. Like the bat and the cat one? Yeah. To me, it didn't sound like new dialogue. Yeah, I thought that's that was what I thought, too. I thought it was in the last trailer, but I also, you know, I wanted to be sure. But yeah, the world needs heroes from DC. What a cool thing. I loved it. Made my day yesterday. It was awesome. So what's your highlight, Jamie? What's your highlight of this little sizzle? Oh, oh goodness. I, I want to say Hawkman, but honestly, it's Dr. Fate. <laughs> Surprisingly, huh? like I'm, I'm not a mega fan or anything, but I've always thought Dr. Fate is like a cool character that I think very much, you know, we, we had this discussion where I thought Hawkman could be like a, a breakout character. I really think Dr. Fate is another one of those characters in any medium is, is primed to break out of somebody would just tell the right story with him in it. And mm-hmm. I think it would be exciting, you know, that they, they have a lot of potential and opportunity that they could do things with him. And I just think he looks literally like he came right up off of a page. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would say Dr. Fate, but like the, the two shots are like back to back of those two. And I, I just want to tie them together and say the, the both of them. But if you make me pick one over the other, I say Dr. Fate, <laughs> okay. which is contradictory to what I said about Hawkman a week or two ago, but I calls him like I sees him. All right. What do you think, uh, Brendan? Highlight. Um, look, I, like I said before, like Hawkman, Dr. Fate and the flash, but I think for the sake of Pierce, I might have to just give it to Dr. Fate because I love me some Pierce. So yeah, I think Dr. Fate just sneaks in as my favorite. Okay, cool. Um, honestly, for me, like, I really want to say Hawkman. It's almost Hawkman, but I honestly feel like it's that shot of the Flash because it's so damn cool. And also because there had been cool. there had been concern around that, and you've got a lot of naysayers out there who want it to fail. And so, to me, just getting a really badass shot of the Flash, and I can't wait for that movie. I know you guys can't either. So to get something like that, and you're like, oh hell yeah, like that really works for me. So, all right, very cool. The world needs heroes, guys. The year of DC starts in a few weeks with the Batman, and it isn't going to stop till Christmas with Aquaman and Batgirl. Good year to be a DC it's, fan. This is, I mean, this is kind of unprecedented. To get this many DC movies in one year is amazing. Well, it's a promising year to be a DC fan, let's put it that way. Yeah. Well, let's also keep in mind that we'll have the you know, direct to video animated films in there. And I did. we're going to, we're going to have 10 DC films by the time everything's said and done this year. Yeah. Well, and the good news is that everyone will agree on them and DC fandom will finally be united again. That's why I said it's a promising year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So well, here, here's, here's the sound of me not giving a flying hell what anybody else thinks about it. I'll, enjoy them without everybody else yeah yeah nice so all these things are coming but we know the batman is coming and i didn't even realize this so we started recording i think i saw it but then i just didn't watch it um fandango did like a it's like a 27 minute interview right with the yeah it's, the, it's, it's pretty incomprehensive yeah cast of the batman and matt reeves no just the cast just the cast, just the cast. okay okay minus minus alfred alfred's not there all right it's, it's Robert Pattinson, Colin Farrell, uh, uh, Riddler, Baldano, Zoe, Baldano Kravitz. Zoe Kravitz, and uh, Jeffrey Wright. All right, nice. So you guys watched it. I didn't because I just kind of missed it. So y'all can feel free to share your thoughts, Jamie. Uh, it, it was basically most of it was fluff. Most of it was just predictable answers to obvious questions. You know, it, it felt very mediated beforehand if you will uh but you know she was 
asked everybody who their favorite Batman was growing up and, and that sort of thing. You know, it, it's it's interesting to hear people discuss, you know, because the age gaps between some of these people in this cast, you know, you, you've got Jeffrey Wright being the, the oldest, but then you've got Colin Farrell, you know, next generation behind him. And then, you know, I don't know how old Dano is. He's probably somewhere between Robert Pattinson and Colin Farrell, I would guess. I don't know for sure. You know, he's, he's kind of vague on how he looks by age but then you got you know pattinson and kravitz are, are a little bit on the younger side so jeffrey wright's answer was batman 66 because that was batman when he was growing up and then colin farrell's answer was one part batman 66 and one part batman 89 because batman 66 was in syndication and batman 89 came out when he was like i think he said 12 or 13 or whatever it was you know it, it was interesting hearing them talk about that but no real information laid out about the movie there. And then they went on to talk about, you know, what they like about Matt Reeves script and how he was bringing these characters to life. And Colin Farrell went on and on about how unbelievably grounded this movie was. And, you know, Colin Farrell spoke like Colin Farrell a lot too. There was a lot of bleeps in there. <laughs> it's yeah. pretty funny. I love that guy. I, tr I truly do. I think he's a yeah. great actor. He's, he's entertaining as hell when he does these kind of things. Cause he looks like he's a borderline introvert and then he gets to talking and he won't shut up. Yeah, which like the I, way he's I can his relate. Chair, like he almost looks like he's cowering. Yep. But then he I, talks and he's just full of personality. And he won't shut up. Yeah, I, I can relate to all of this. So maybe this is why I like Colin Farrell so much. <laughs> uh, you know, Zoe talks about, you know, bringing Catwoman to life and inspirations there. I, I think it was the the moderator for the the interview brought up batman ego and they all kind of chimed in on that uh so i, I don't know it, it wasn't disinteresting but i don't think it was anything that was like headline worthy or anything i'm but sure there's all kinds of quotes in there that people will be taking out of text by you know today or whenever but i was gonna say for, i think for a batman fan it was a fun 27 minutes like i i genuinely enjoyed watching it um and one thing that I took away from it is I actually really liked how happy Pattinson is and how how much fun I think he's having, you know, having won this role. Like, he genuinely seems happy and excited about it and is a, a genuine fan and, yeah, like, he just looks thrilled, which is which is nice to see, like... I mean, Bale's Bale in all his interviews. Like, he, he's kind of a little bit gruff, and we all know the story with Affleck, and he just wasn't happy at the end and not wanting to go into that all that bullshit again. But, you know, to see a guy who's playing Batman in a live-action movie just be happy and smiling and just genuinely being honoured to have the role was was really nice. And, and it, to me, honestly, I thought it was a bit of a joy to watch. So, and, you know, it... it look it did its job for me i'm honestly the last week or so like i'm really really starting to get excited for this movie and um i think it was only if sh an hour or so after we finished recording last week like all of a sudden on twitter i see there's this prequel novel out and you know i was lucky enough to find a copy here the following day and i've read that in the last couple of days and i i really enjoyed the world building that is in the novel um it set some things up and I mean, it's canon. So, you know, I feel having read that, I mean, it's, it's meant for younger readers, but everyone I know who's read it is, you know, our age <laughs> thereabouts. Um, you know, I'll go into the movie now feeling I, I know a little bit more of what I'm in for um, in terms of this Gotham um, and why, why some things are the way that they are. Um, no, I, I, I would, yeah. If, if you've got a spare 27 minutes, and you want to just have like some fun watching something Batman, I'd, I'd definitely chuck it on. I had a good time and I'm, I'm glad Jamie brought it to our attention. It was just a fluke thing. I was, I was trying to watch that world needs heroes clip for like the, the 10th time and it <laughs> popped up in my uh, YouTube recommended videos. So I watched it and I, I did like the, the, the moderator at one point asked Pattinson how long he wanted to play Batman for. Is this something he wanted to keep on doing? And he got kind of wide-eyed, like he was taken by surprise. And then he kind of danced around for a couple seconds. And then he did mention a couple tidbits of saying he has talked to Matt Reeves about doing a trilogy. And 
He is he was, basically willing to, to do, do this role for as long as people want to watch him do it. So mm. take those things for whatever you will. All right. Yeah. I, honestly, Andy, I, I'd, I'd watch it. I think you'd like it. Yeah. I mean, maybe tomorrow when I have time. But yeah, it's it sort of I didn't get a chance to watch it prior to this. And uh, shockingly, there were very few pull quotes that were were shared out there. So that's what sort of led me to believe it was a pretty standard promotional, you know, interview where they all say nice things and pleasant things, but they don't really reveal a lot. But I'll check it out. I'll watch oh, it. I, but it, glad it, you guys watched it, it for me. Foul, but I'll be perfectly honest. It really is. They, they also all wanted all right. to call in for a wellness check on Matt Reeves because they thought he worked entirely too hard putting this movie together. And they were still really concerned about him and like post-production shit so i guess they're trying to say this director worked really hard and spent a lot of hours on this movie i, I know that's unheard of but <laughs> all right cool well awesome more stuff coming before you know it but we also looked back a little we looked back into the past because we watched the next episode of batman beyond The Batman Beyond we've been waiting for, guys. So in Season 3, Episode 5, Out of the Past. It was directed by James Tucker, written by Paul Dini, and it aired on October 21st of 2000. This is one that fans have been writing us ever since we started the show, going, oh, well, at least Jamie's got to watch Out of the Past. At least. And now the time has come. And I know, Brandon, you said you hadn't seen it either. No, I hadn't. Here I we go. Know. It's... It is the return of Talia al Ghul. So uh, the episode starts out amazingly with a Batman musical, which is which is one of the things I remember most about this episode. It's awesome. Terry brought Bruce to this Batman musical, and Bruce is not enjoying it, but Terry is. It also um, triggered a response from my wife, who was cooking dinner in the kitchen while I was watching it for the second time today, of her going, what the hell are you watching in there? You know, I'd watch the whole musical if That's they what put I told it. Her. I said, I t- I said what was going on. I said, you know, I I'd, I'd watch like a 2-hour musical like this, you know. I want this to happen. Yeah. They're a superstitious cowardly lot. And I couldn't see it through the wall or the fireplace, but I'm pretty sure she rolled her eyes when I did that. Just saying. That's eh, probably a safe bet. Uh, but it's Bruce's birthday. They don't say which birthday, right? But he's He's getting up there, and he is not the man he once was. He sees his life played out fictionally in a musical, and Talia shows up to wish him a happy birthday. And she brings him a meal, and he's like, I can't eat that stuff anymore. I'm an old man. And so she says, oh, she's doing all this great work. She's correcting the sins of her father. The Lazarus Pit has been a a gift, and she would like to extend that gift to him. All he needs to do is come, and she will revive him. He'll be better than new. Uh, Terry shows up. Terry already knows who she is. He has done his research. And uh, so they talk about it, and they do the old, Terry keeps calling him Raz, and (laughs) Talia goes, "Um, actually, it's pronounced Raish. It's a common mistake, which is so funny (laughs) because me and Brendan were just talking about this. Um, But I like that they cover both bases, and so... Talia goes, think about it. Think about my offer. And Bruce doesn't know what he wants to do. So Bruce the next day, or I don't know if it's the next day, but within a few days, has an incident where he gets a flat tire and he gets attacked by these thugs. These thugs threaten a girl. He tries to save the girl and he fails because uh, he's just he's an older man now. And Terry comes in and saves him in a clutch. And this is just what Bruce needs to go. You know what? Maybe I need to take Talia up on this. So away they go. They go off. They meet up with Talia back at her place. And he's like, okay, I'm going to do it. So Bruce goes into the Lazarus pit. And Talia says to Terry, oh, I know you're probably worried that he's going to be Batman again. Don't worry. I got plans for him. His Batman days are behind him. We're going to work, do all this great work together. And so Bruce is young-ish again. It's kind of like the beginning of Hocus Pocus when she's like, we're young. Well, younger. (laughs) That's how Bruce was. I'm younger. Uh, And so they say, oh, it's going to take a few more treatments before this is really sets in, before it's permanent. And 
Bruce is feeling great, but he also feels regret for what he did. He said it's unnatural. You shouldn't do this. They realize that Talia is not what she seems. It turns out at some point over the years, spoilers, guys, spoilers, Roz actually put his consciousness into Talia's body. So he sacrificed his own daughter so he could continue living forever in her body. But he has perfected the process. And the whole reason he wanted Bruce was so that he could put his brain into Bruce's body. So he starts this process. Terry comes in, saves him, manages to stop the whole thing in time. They're going to save Roz slash Talia, but he, she stays behind to save the, the machine and the whole thing explodes. And uh, Terry tries to, to, to go back in to save her. And, and Bruce is like, nope, just leave it. All of that stuff is, is in the past anyway. And then... Bruce bids farewell to Talia and then they imply that, oh, you know, he's going to go back to normal within a week or so because he only did the one treatment. But there's this very sad moment where he's looking through all of his past loves and that includes Talia. So that is out of the past. Jamie, now that you've watched it, you watched it twice. What do you think? I freaking loved this episode. Right up to the point where they're running down the hallway and banging into that door. And after that, the ep- what door? What are you talking they, about? They were Bruce just all of a sudden throws that barbell into the the mirror. Oh, and tells Terry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we, we I, I got go. you And then they're running down the hallway and they have that nice musical cue for that uh, Mask of the Phantasm theme that I was just talking about recently. Mm-hmm. And uh, then it just. <whistles> after that. I just the, the oh. rest of the, the reason I watched it twice is because I wanted to know if like some sort of shock thing caused me not to be able to settle in and enjoy. So maybe I should watch it a second time and find out if it was that or if I really just didn't like it. And the, yeah, the back half of this episode, other than like the very closing moments are utter clown shoes. So it was the moment where we realized that Roz's consciousness was in time yeah i mean we're we're paying david warner to throw a voice in here would it have cost the animators that much more to just animate Roz into it and he can be in some kind of deformed or decrepit state from you know too many trips into the lazarus pit or something that went wrong or, or there's some other way that they could write this than talia all of a sudden has david warner's voice well you know where i thought it was going i thought the henchman because he kind of wore like the neckerchief thing like Raz like and he's super young like I thought the henchman was going to be Raz did you catch who That's... the voice of that henchman was I did look but I can't remember Mark Hamill oh that was I did oh see yeah 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 voice. I didn't realize that was him but yeah that's where I thought it was going and I'm I'm kind of with Jamie in that I was loving it um, but I just the body swap thing kind of lost me um, which was a shame, but I was all in. I mean, look, that opening, so I, th- I messaged you guys when I was watching it. And I was like, spoiler alert, this episode's getting an A plus just for that opening scene, which, you know, and then you're watching the musical and then it just comes up written by Paul Dini. I'm like, well, of course it is. <laughs> like, it was just, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's brilliant. And Dini just writes Batman so well, but I, yeah, it just it kind of lost it, me as well with the body swap thing. It got so jarring. I wondered if Dini only wrote the first half of the episode. I'm telling you, it, it it went south in a hurry and and just slight recovery at the end, but not enough. Too little, too late. And listen, I love the first half of this episode because I first of all, the Batman musical, fantastic. Bruce's reaction to it, where Terry <laughs> says it sway me, and says you? it garbage, I thought was pretty good. Um, Bruce, you know, feeling the pains of being an old guy, which we, we've had a little bit of that from him, you know, in this show over over the span of, you know, two and a half seasons or whatever we're through now. Uh, so, you know, it makes sense that that's a recurring theme with him. But looking through the photos of the old flames and seeing, you know, Zatanna, and I'm pretty sure, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure that redhead was supposed to be Andrea. Did everybody else come to that conclusion? Or That was... Oh, yeah, yeah, I think so. What? Yeah. Like when he's looking he's through looking the photos. He's looking through the photos. He looks at Zatanna. 
And then there's I I swear the second one looks, looks like at, Lois Lane, look, but don't quote me Lois. on that. He looks at Lois. Yeah, Lois is okay. in there. And then mm-hmm. the third one, I th- and third and fourth one, Dude. I think he looks at her as a redhead. And I I it's who who else than Andrea would that be? Dude, that's Barbara. Is it? Oh yeah, it is yeah, Barbara. Barbara. Yeah, you're right. It is. That's unnatural. Because that's that's what I kept saying when all the shit hit the fan with the killing joke. I'm just like. They, in for some reason, in that fourth season of, of Batman the Animated Series, they completely threw out the Dick and Barbara romance thing, and it was they alluded to Barbara and Bruce being romantically linked. Even in Mystery of the Batwoman, yeah. like when Barbara calls and Tim's like, she misses you, like, that's what it was alluding to the whole time. That's why I never had such a huge problem with the, I mean stooping her on a rooftop's a different thing i i get that but like it was alluded to before and and yeah that was balbra that you guys can follow whatever timeline yeah. you want in my timeline that's andrea <laughs> I, 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 don't I, don't have it. I i can't stand the idea of those two being romantically linked so I, i'm rolling with andrea there uh but anyway you know talia the bruce and talia relationship has always been fascinating to me since the very first talia story i ever read which i believe was bride of the demon and those two have a relationship that is so at ends with each other in that they both truly love each other, but they're both willing to sacrifice that for what they feel is the greater cause than their singularity together. You know, their, their love, their relationship, what have you. She will almost always turn on him for, for her dad, and he will almost always turn on her to stop him. Uh, it's it's a fascinating, complex, and and deep relationship that those two have had, and they did an excellent job of of playing on that and portraying it, you know, in 12, 15 minutes of an episode, whatever, probably not even that much, probably 10 or 12 minutes. Uh, you know, Bruce saying that he has second thoughts about going to get the, the treatment done, but, you know, having the incident with the the blown tire and the 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 thugs attacking him and all that stuff. I, th- I thought that was all really well done because, you know, his his heart is willing, but his body just isn't able anymore. And that's kind of what ultimately pushes him over the edge to make the decision to take Talia up on the offer. It just so much of this was so right and so well done. Uh, e- even the bit where Talia, you know, Terry's coming down the stairs while they're in the cave and, and you know, he spots her. He's and singing the, well, he's singing the song too. He, he's singing the song, laugh. which is yeah. great. Yeah. But, you know, he he rattles off, you know, what happened to her, what happened to Roz. She's been living on New Cuba. You know, he, he's been keeping abreast of, of what's going on with her. You know, it shows that Terry, you know, does his homework. And he even tells Bruce, you know, you think I'm down here playing video games this whole time. So, you know, all of that, I thought, was just so thoughtful and well done and, and well portrayed. And then it just felt like in that moment there was a switch flipped where it, it just went so like – the moment where the they're trying to throw Terry into the crocodiles or alligators, whatever they are, and the guy winds up going over the the pier into the water, and he like jumps up out of there and he runs on the top of alligators to get off of there. It's like I saw James Bond do that shit back in 1972. I don't need to see it anymore. Okay, it was it was silly but funny then. Now it's just plain silly. I think that's because you can't kill someone in a cartoon <laughs> like that. That's all. That I mean, was. he could have gone in the water and they could have just left it to the imagination at that point. Yeah, but you have to show that they're alive. They have to give no, that. No, you don't. Uh, you don't have to show sh- nothing. Well, they, no, they did. <laughs> it was a mandate. Stupid. Just stupid. I agree, but that's why it's there. The fact that she talks with his voice makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. I get why they're <laughs> doing it, and they're they're trying to you know get there in a hurry without over explaining anything or or any of that. But it's just goofy. Bruce's one liners about you know. Him saying, you know, you, lady, you're really creeping me out. And Bruce says, well, <laughs> says you, I'm the one that had, that kissed her or she kissed me or something like that. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not exactly home, holding up on the homophobic comments these days, but uh, I, I don't know. Just very little of this worked up until that moment where he's in the cave and, you know, he's kind of resigning himself to his fate and what's going to happen. <sighs> I I wish every bit of this episode was as good as that beginning and and the first half. I I truly do, but it unfortunately it tanks so quickly and so laughably for me that I I find it hard to let the 
first part of it take prevalence at this point. All right. Wow. Um, it's I, I, I like the line of, hey, she kissed me. Um, but I don't, totally thought I'm like, um, he just came out. He is young for the first time in many, many years. They would have done more than just kiss. <laughs> Well, there was and then it gets scene really where complicated. Like silhouetted against the bedroom window, and I thought for sure it was going to fade to black, or they were going to have that passionate yeah. kiss, and then the camera pans up or something. But I was like, oh, because that's what I thought. You know, she was alluding to, and she's like, you know, he won't be. His nights are going to be spoken for, or whatever she said. It's like, oh, you know, Bruce is thinking with his with downstairs with this whole getting younger thing, and um, yeah, mm. no, but I. I'm I'm very much with Jamie. It did lose me in the second half. I think there's there was better ways you could have done it, but with the time that they had to work with, or, I mean, you could have made it a two parter, you know. Yeah, make it make definitely. It more of an event. I think there is there is definitely that was my first thought when I watched this. I really like this episode. I think it's great. I don't disagree with you guys about the the mind swap. I do think that that is 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 a step too far. There was a better way to do this than that. Um, so. I do agree with you guys, but I, for me, that's not enough to sink the episode because I like everything else. I even like why they need to manipulate Bruce into going into the Lazarus pit to make him a uh, appropriate vessel for Roz. I think that's actually really good, but I just don't n- know why Roz has to be inside of Talia. That's the part that I don't think quite works. Uh, the the um, line about him hitting like a girl didn't sit well with me either. I just want to throw that see, out I there. Thought, I thought that was funny. Oh. <laughs> Um, but I still really liked it, but I did think I'm like, oh man, this could easily have been a two-parter because there's a lot of story here and it almost feels not rushed in a bad way in that, like it feels too quick, but I also feel like, oh, these moments you could have taken more advantage of given more layers to them, uh, and made a longer story because there's plenty of stuff here to explore well, there with a, him. There is a two-parter coming up too. I mean, I don't know what it's about, but I mean, they're not opposed to doing two-parters right no absolutely um, I'm, I'm, mistaken, I'm like no i mean yeah. honestly i batman the animated series when ross first showed up was a two-parter was it not it was it was i'm just saying like it, in a show like this if you're going to revisit the classic series and bring back characters like that like it deserves to have more room to breathe it it definitely should have been a two-parter yeah well i even thought this could have been expanded and made a direct to video movie. I think there's enough good stuff in here that you could have even done that, but at the very least a two parter, even so I love that it is a Bruce story. I love that it really confronts his age and his mortality and him looking backwards and to bring back uh, a character from his past. It makes perfect sense that it would be Talia and or Roz. So all of that I think really works. I love, you know, Terry still plays an important part in it. And I think that, God, I think it's really good. I, again, the brain swap thing is a little weird, maybe a bridge too far. But other than that, this is for me, this is one of my favorite episodes of the show. Yeah, I that's yeah. Like I said, it just to me, it was a bridge too far. Yeah. And at the end, like I do think that, you know, we had talked about in the past where a lot of times these episodes end so abruptly. This is the rare episode that really l- lets it wind down in a much more natural way. And it really leaves you on this very melancholy note when mm. it's over. It feels more like a, a BTAS ending. Yeah, yeah, a real ending. Mm. All right, well, give me a letter grade and any final thoughts you got, Jamie? I mean, it would have been an A plus if it would have stretched that far and, and gone with the closed out the second half of the episode as strong as the first half came out because I'm telling you I was in love with both times I watched it I was in love with that stuff but it just it it irked me to no avail some of the things that they did there I think the Bruce stuff was great I think the Terry stuff was above average Uh, I love Talia I think she's one of my favorite Batman characters uh, ever as is Roz Uh, it just I don't know it just it doesn't sit right with me the way that it was handled. I think the the story and characters both deserve more respect than what they were given here instead of trying to wrap it up a little too quickly. Um, you know the the two parter thing never really dawned on me till you guys brought it up, but that makes perfect sense now in, in hindsight hearing it. Uh, it I, I think it just deserved better than what it got. But 
that being said, I did love the first quite a bit. So I'm going to go with a B on this one. Well, like I said, I, I messaged you guys while I was watching it and said it's an A plus just for the opening scene alone. Um, but Jim, yeah, that second half kind of jarred me a bit. So I, I am going to have to knock it down a bit. I'm, I'm going to go B plus. Mm. All right. Andy's coming in with an A minus. I'm coming in with a solid old A. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I think this is very close to an A plus, but again, I do agree with you guys about, about, Talia speaking in Raz's voice. I think there was just maybe a, a more elegant way to do that. Other than that, though, I think it's a great story. It's a great way to bring back uh, the ghosts of the past. The musical is awesome. Um, they definitely pay a little more attention to the Bat Cave and all of the relics of the past. I think it's a great episode of the show, and it's I think one of the best. So yeah, for me, it's a big solid A. Do you guys read the 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 cast list on this episode? You know who one of the singers in that musical? Yeah, was? I. I saw a bunch of the names, yes, but go ahead. Only one to me was recognizable. You might recognize more, but Adrian Barbeau. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. And then there was one other one in there, because the uh, whoever this person was, they played a character, and I'm, I had to think about who the character was for a second. And then I, I can't remember who the voice actor was now. Obviously, David Warner is, is Roz, and I even forget the actress who played Talia now. I always forget, Adrian Barbeau, was she Poison Ivy or Catwoman? She was Catwoman. Catwoman, that's right. Yep. Well, and Talia was, uh, oh my God. Yeah, she was a well-known Romeo actress. and Juliet. Yeah, Romeo and Juliet, I think. Because I recognized her voice. Let me check. Beta... Olivia Hussey. Olivia Hussey, yep. All right. And Michael Rosenbaum was one of those voices too. That's he was in the there too. One. Thank you. I couldn't remember who it was. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, he was one of the he was one of the alligator guys. Oh, was he? Is that who he was? Yeah. I was trying to figure out who was doing Batman in the musical. Was that Kevin Conroy? I think it's Kevin Conroy. I think it is too. Oh, another another thing I wanted to shout out for this episode. I wanted to make sure I mentioned it, and I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, Conroy. I mean, we all know what a voice talent that guy is and, and the life and character and, and and vibe that he brings to Batman. But the fact that there is a noticeable and and definite change in his voice from old Bruce back to that younger, more vibrant Bruce, mm-hmm. I, I, I think he, he deserves a little bit of a extra nod just for pulling that off. And it, for obvious reasons, that voice is more strained doing the older character, but the fact that they just had that enough attention to detail to make his voice go back to more what it was in the animated series. And it wasn't even quite, it was like an in-between from what the animated series was in The Old Man, which to me was the brilliance of it, is he's not as young as he once was, but he's still younger than what's portrayed on the show. And Conroy's voice work really brings that through that little extra bit. No, he's great. All right, well, out of the past, not the home run that everybody expected. Could have been. There you Should go. Should have been, but wasn't. All right. Well, next one up. Maybe the next one will work better for you because this next one features a gorilla. Yeah, I know. I, I went ahead and read the synopsis for it because I thought, is that Grodd? No. Uh, yeah, next one is called Speak No Evil. So that is your homework for next time. All right. Let's check in with you, fine feathered finks, and crack open the Wayne Manor mailbox. <laughs> You've got mail. Maybe temporary. She wrote a letter. You're the mail of a messenger. This is all master Wayne. All right, first message here is from Jim Scroggs. It says, uh, in regards to your hundred years from now discussion. I think Aquaman would be a great choice considering the state of the planet and our oceans. Also, what do you think Bruce Wayne's favorite pizza is? Uh, Thanks, Jim. Um, So he's talking about when we were talking about like Batman Beyond shows or comics for other DC characters in the future. I think Aquaman makes a lot of sense. That's actually a good call. He's another one who'd probably stick around a lot longer than most humans. Um, And Bruce Wayne's favorite pizza. I don't know. What do you think, Jamie? anchovies because it's healthier than pepperoni but still has the protein 
Okay. Brandon? Yeah, I don't know. Something like like a, a meat lovers or... I don't know. It could just be like plain cheese too. Like he wouldn't care. I mean, with that physique, does he eat pizza? Probably yeah. not. Yeah. He probably gets the little Caesar's calzoni. After <laughs> watching Reacher, I figured out that you can have the body of a Greek god and eat like absolute trash for your entire life. Oh, is that is that what he does? Because when when a TV show tells me that, it must be true, right? It it's got to be. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. On his cheat day, what the hell would he have? The little says this thing was a good call. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Calzoni. He and he wants a free poster with his his face on it. Um. All right. Next message is from Muhammad, who still doesn't like the way I say his name. I don't know what to tell you, Muhammad. Uh, he says, hey, 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 guys, I hope all's well and the New Year's treating you well. Um, regarding my rant last time, yeah, it wasn't my best. I clearly didn't think it through and I agreed with most of your counterpoints. Muhammad, I don't even remember what it was, if I'm being honest. So uh, great. OK, um, he says regarding the Burnside costume for Batgirl, I like it well enough. I'll reserve my judgment until I see it in the film. Uh, the only thing that I have to nitpick is it looks a little too leathery to me. And I have a question. What is the weirdest Batman story you guys have read? And what is Jamie's NFL team name? Sorry for the unstructured email. Regards, Muhammad Adil. All right. Um, Weirdest Batman story and Jamie's NFL team name. Is he talking about the Raiders? I mean, that's the only NFL team I have. Yeah, so I would think that be the would Las be Vegas the, Raiders. The Raiders, right? Yeah. Um, weirdest Batman story, Jamie. I mean, because it's fresh on the brain, I'm going to say Ego. Did I mention I don't like that book? I've never read it, but I feel like I should in preparation. I've got it but haven't read it for years it you, you'll you'll read that story and you'll understand what i'm talking about andy i, I won't ruin it for you but the, there's something that happens in that book that actually takes a lot of prevalence that uh i don't imagine is going to sit very well with you any more than it did with me so hmm. um brendan any thoughts most of grant morrison's run um particularly the the batman of is it zero and r or whatever it was like that shit just got that's when i stopped reading monthly comics honestly it just got too nuts for me like full credit to you if you if you like what morrison does but i've never done drugs and i think that's probably why <laughs> funnily enough the one that jumped to my mind is a grant morrison one so that makes sense what a what a surprise yeah, for me it's the Arkham Asylum one. You know that one? Yeah, yeah that one is either. weird. I can't that one's super weird. <laughs> yeah, it's super weird. I only read it once, and I was just like, I don't even know what I just read. Um, I know it has its fans, and that's great. But yeah, I just, I, I, it felt like a drug trip, really, especially because the artwork. That's one of those books that I always, I read it when it first came out. I bought bought it and read it when it first came out, and I was kind of like. Hmm. You know, I, I was a younger reader at that time. I was probably in my mid teens when that came out. And then I read it again. I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, eight years ago, I, I, a little while ago, but more, much more recently. And I was like, yeah, I don't understand why people hold this in the reverence that they do. Uh, I feel like one of these days we'll cover it, but man, I'm just, I'm not in a rush to read it again. I'll tell you that. Me either. Who does the art? Is it, is it Sam Keith or? It's like, somebody I don't on those lines. Yeah. It has to be because it's it's weird art to go with the weird story. Because like I've looked at it at the comic store many times over the years, and I'm just like, I know I'm not gonna like this. <laughs> I've just never yeah. bothered with it. It's not if it, you don't like Grant Morrison and you've seen the artwork. Yeah, there's you know what you're getting in it for me. Yeah, yeah it's, exactly. It's... Well, I've, I've never read any of this story arc because it was right before I started buying monthlies again. But I tell you, another thing that seemed really weird to me was that whole super heavy thing where Gordon was wearing the chappy Batman costume. Oh, yeah, that was weird. That's a good call. Yeah, that seemed very odd to me. That was an odd one. Yep. 
All right, well, moving forward. Next one is from Manu. It says, hello, gentlemen, how are we? I agree with Mr. Balls and Stuart from Guernsey about ranking the live action Batman movies. That would be amazing. I'm surprised it hasn't been done yet. Also, what's your favorite thing about Batman? For me, it's the cars that chicks dig. Let's make that ranking happen. Bye for now, Manu. Thanks, Manu. Um, I mean, here's the thing. We have ranked the live action Batman films, but we've done it here as part of the mailbox and sort of like really quick, right? Like I feel like people asked us to do it and then we just did ours off the cuff really quick. Didn't go into great detail. So that's how we've done it. But no, we've never dedicated an episode, but it is now on the plans. This is now a third vote. So there you have it. Um, Favorite thing about Batman? Wide open, Jamie. Um off the cuff answer without having time to actually sit down and, and meditate on the topic, his indomitable spirit, no matter the odds, no matter what it looks like, he always finds a way because he just, you know, it, I guess you can kind of reference the whole Batman begin things of, you know, why do we fall to learn to pick ourselves up? I mean, that, that to me seems very much like what Batman is at his essence. So I, I will say his indomitable spirit and will to, you know, get through whatever and get everything done that he needs to. Okay. Brandon. I mean, it's a question that, that really, I think needs more than two seconds of, of thought to come up with a, a so well, I mean, answer. he says his is the Batmobile. So like, I don't know if yeah. you want, he, you don't have to go deep. Look, the thing that that's, that just came to mind with the, when the question was asked was, one of the things that attracted me to the character back in 1989 when I first discovered him was his look like that, the cowl and like the, just the figure that he cuts in that Cape and everything. Like it's, I still think Batman without my bias is one of the coolest looking characters in fiction period. Um, so I, I think just the general aesthetic of the, the costume design for the character. Yeah, I agree with both of you. Jamie went deep, so we're gonna he, he checks that box. I agree with Brendan as well. So then I'm gonna go with a different one. I'm gonna maybe it's cheating. I'm gonna say the Rogues Gallery because he has the best Rogues Gallery in comics in fiction, and we love him as the hero. But he's got the coolest villains too. All right. Next message is from Rhodey. It says, hey, Batfam, we're just a few weeks away from the Batman. I'm pretty much in the same camp as you guys. I'm definitely going to see it, and I'm going to give it its fair chance, but my excitement is pretty muted at the moment. I've been wondering, would I be more excited if the Dark Knight trilogy, which took a similar approach, did not exist? Or alternatively, what if we had gotten to spend more time with Batfleck and see more of him interacting with fantastical elements in the greater DC universe prior to this movie? What are your thoughts? Thanks, Rhodey. Um, thank you, Rhodey. Okay, what do you think? Like, would there would this be different if we hadn't had the Dark Knight trilogy, or if we'd gotten a longer run of Batfleck that was more fantastical? Would you be more open to the Batman then, Jamie? I really think so, because if we'd had either a bigger gap between Batman coming back, and I'd just be craving anything Batman by that point, or having a much more uh. I can't think of the word I need to use there. A, a longer one with Affleck where they did do the fantastical elements and then out of the blue, this one comes along that is a gritty, grounded, realistic type Batman without any Nolan having done all of that same shit before. Yeah, I probably would be much more interested and excited for this film without that. But as it stands, we don't have any of that stuff. We do have the Nolan films. I see too much similarity to the Nolan films and it hasn't been that long since the Nolan films, so... Mm. Here we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Brendan? Absolutely. That's a really good point. Like, even even if the Nolan films existed and there was a bit more time between them, between these two versions, but, I mean, even more so if there was just more breathing room between Affleck and this version. Like, I mean, for all intents and purposes, we saw Affleck in a Batman movie less than a year ago. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna count Zack Snyder's Justice League, and we're getting him in another movie this year, like it's, and and we all know how well we all feel about that version of the character. Um, so yeah, I think 
even if things had have panned out the way that they did with Affleck, but there was a bit more breathing room between the two versions, I'd I'd probably even be more excited for it than I have been. But but like I said just before, like the last week or so, like I have kind of turned a corner. Like I'm I'm really starting to to get excited and, you know, I've got tickets and everything now. So it's you know, I I am warming to a lot of things that, that I previously hadn't been, but it is it is a fair it is a fair point. Yeah. I mean, I don't even think you'd need to get rid of the Dark Knight trilogy or, or you know, no. even say that. But I do think that the point of like if we had gotten more of Affleck's Bat world, not even the Justice League, but just more of that Batman's world and that Batman's Catwoman and that Batman's Riddler and that Batman's Penguin. If we had gotten that the more comic booky uh, version of Batman that Snyder was embracing and we got more of it for more movies and then there was a gap and we came back to this. Would we be a little more excited about it? Yeah, I think so. Because then we would have just scratched that itch prior and this would feel a little more different. But because we barely got into that with Affleck, we missed all of that. And so it, it does feel like it's a really quick time to come back to the hyper-realistic version. So, all right. Thanks for the question, Rody. Next message is Mar- from Mark Jurasevic. It says, hey, holy Batcasters, I hope you've been well. Last week I got a gardener to trim the fr- <laughs> gardener to trim <laughs> the front bush and was thinking I might need to do it myself and order some Manscaped products. <laughs> It'd be a hell of a lot cheaper, and man, those hedge trimmers come too close for comfort. Yikes. <laughs> seriously, s- seriously, I'm sort of amazed that the villain Shame from Batman 66 is never mentioned in a Best Villain Roundup. Played by Academy Award winner Cliff Robertson, uh, I do think it's a shame that none of uh, the best Batman lines come from... Oh, it's a shame as one of those best Batman lines comes from the series. As Batman said, you're not worthy of the name, Shane. You're a sham, Shame. Don't ever cry in my tights or pull my leg again. That's award-winning stuff. Cheers from Down Under, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Um, You know, first of all, it's shame with an M, not Shane with an N, which is kind of really? random. But I, yeah, Uncle... I thought it was Shane, too. It's shame. Interesting. Um, But yeah, Uncle Ben, Cliff Robertson was shame. Um... I, God, I don't remember that episode very well at all, but I have a guess why he's not talked about more because he just looked like a cowboy. Like he didn't have like a really cool, unique look. And so I, my guess is that's why. I wonder how many episodes he was in. I'd have to look it up, but you're motivating me to give Shame another chance. I guess I'll say that. Do you remember Shame, Jamie? I have no recollection of this character whatsoever. It was uh, Cliff Robertson. Uncle Ben. Well, I guess you'll have to go look back too. I suppose so. Um, all right. Next message is from Josh Gonzalez. It says, Hey, it's Josh again. I wanted to share my thoughts about Batman not having enough live films pre Batman v Superman. As a young teen, I always thought Batman didn't make more live action movies because music composers couldn't make scores that would top Danny Elfman's music. I now know better from listening to your podcast. Although, in my opinion, as iconic as Elfman's theme for Batman 89 is, there's other Batman music that's great. Danny Elfman once said in an interview, Batman only has one theme, and that bothers me so much because when I think about Batman, I think of the Arkham City theme or Tom Holkenberg's Batman theme from Zack Snyder's Justice League. I'm really enjoying Michael Giacchino's Batman theme. In my head, Batman's theme should give the feeling of hope and fear at the same time, and that's what I'm receiving from Giacchino's Batman score. I can't wait to see the Batman. I hope you're enjoying you're enjoying Giacchino's music for it, and sorry for all the bad grammar from Josh. All right, thanks, Josh. Um, we talked about this. I guess I guess this is what your response, but I think we we kind of said the same thing. Is like I mean, like the Elfman theme is iconic, but that doesn't mean there aren't other great Batman themes, including the new one from Michael Giacchino. So there's there is room there. And I remember the Danny Elfman interview. It was around Justice League. I want to look it up because I want to see it in context with the conversation. It does feel a little a little douchey, but I also feel like he's not entirely wrong because when no. people think of Batman, they think of the Elfman theme. So I don't know. 
I get your point, but yes, there's a lot of great Batman music, and I like the Giacchino theme too. Jamie, thoughts on on the Batman theme? Mm, you know, I thought it was fine. I didn't think it was great. I'm like Brendan. I think I need a little bit more context other than just listening to the music isolated from anything else. That that much like for me, it. it how the music is used in the movie and how it makes me think of what's going on in the film when I listen to it. Like so many scores I listen to that I, I listen to a lot. Like this week, it, a big one for me has been John Williams' Superman score. And as I listen to that, I can think of exactly where it's playing and what scenes going on and everything else as I'm driving around, running errands, dropping off kids, picking up kids and everything else. I, I'm watching Superman the movie in my head as I'm doing it. So I'll, I'll probably need some of that context in order to appreciate what this theme is really telling me, but I don't mind it. I don't think anything's bad about it. I just need a little bit more from it to settle it in for my taste. Yeah. Um, I feel like I've kind of said my piece about it for the last two episodes running, so I've really got nothing to add. All right, that's fine. Okay, next message is from our pal Eric Carter. Hey, Eric. He says, greetings, old chums. First, congratulations on eight years on the Bat Airwaves. It's awesome. I'm sure it's a st- it's staggering looking back at how much the world, your lives, and of course, the DC Universe has changed since the show began. I wanted to let you guys know that Holy Batcast has had a major impact on me over the years and was one of the biggest inspirations for me to create my own content. The show was one of the first podcasts I ever listened to and is the only one of the original few that I still listen to. I don't know any of you outside of the virtual conversation, but you all feel like buddies that I chatted up with at the comic shop. We may not always agree on everything, but the one thing we definitely agree on is that Batman is the best damn character ever created. So a huge thank you to Andy, Jamie, and Brendan for consistently providing entertaining and fun Batman content. I'll leave you guys with this question. In the eight years of content that has been created on Holy Batcast, what are some topics that you feel like are ripe to be revisited, and which ones do you think you'd like another crack at? Once again, thank you guys for being you. Here's to the next eight years of Holy Batcast. Keep the bat signal lit and pointed skyward. Your bat brother, Eric Carter. Oh, thank you, Eric. That's very sweet. We definitely appreciate it. And uh, yeah, great to hear from you. And we appreciate the congratulations. So, um, all right. So topics that are ripe to be revisited or we'd like another crack at. Jamie? Ranking the Batman movies. (laughs) <laughs> oh <laughs> well that one will happen that's good uh anything else i can't think of anything readily off the top of my head that i i can tell you on real fans i want to redo the whole halloween conversation but other than that i, I can't think of anything as far as batcast <laughs> I, you know, the ones that come to mind because they, we did them so early on in the show and I don't think we did them comprehensively is the Dark Knight Rises and Batman and Robin, strangely enough. Both of those, I feel like they were fun conversations, but they weren't like a full comprehensive look back at those movies, especially because Dark Knight Rises was only two years old at that point. Um, so I do feel like I would like to circle back around on both of those movies. Um, although we did do a Batman and Robin commentary, which was sort of a way to get another crack at it. Yeah, but, unless, you, unless you want Brendan to do that episode, uh, you can count me out. I'm done with that movie. Done. D-U-N. No, nah, nah, that's what you say now. Well, I will say that it's the 25th anniversary of Batman and Robin and the 10th anniversary of Dark Knight Rises this year. So if you did want to circle back on them... Now, this, this is a year, year to do year. it. This would be the year okay. to do it. Their anniversary. Here's, here's, how, here's how we divvy it up. Brendan takes Batman and Robin. I take Dark Knight Rises. There. Everybody's happy. Okay. Oh, is Easy everyone enough. happy? Is everyone happy, are they? <laughs> um, I, yeah, I just feel like at the beginning of the show, because it was still new and we were still figuring it out, I feel like a lot of those episodes, they're fine, but like we hadn't quite found our rhythm yet. So I feel like those are the ones I always want to go back and redo especially like you said jamie like for real fans a lot of those too i I wish we could go back which is why we did um when i was in quarantine last year i did another back to the future episode because the first one we just weren't able to get that deep and we were stupid and went let's do the whole trilogy in one episode and that just wasn't enough um so yeah that was probably back when you were trying to 
do the episodes all in one hour or less so you could listen to a whole episode in just one workout. Yep, exactly. So, you know, you live and you learn, but I also feel like for stuff, especially with Batman stuff, I feel like nobody nobody gets too mad at revisiting, <laughs> like especially Batman movies. Everyone's like, yeah, I know that we've talked about it before, but we'll talk about it again. So, With the Batman movie thing, one thing I will say is um, I've like in all the Batman movie chat we've had, I've never really discussed Batman Returns with you guys. Um, and when you did sort of the deep dive that Christmas, Christmas time, I think I was part of the show at that point, but for some reason I couldn't be on the Christmas episode. Um, so I'm looking forward to, you know, I'm assuming hopefully doing the, the commentary track this year for the 30th anniversary, because it's just one that I've never really talked about with you guys. So that's something I'm looking forward to to visiting myself personally for the first time but you know obviously revisiting it as a show is batman returns are are we shooting for that for the anniversary or are we actually going to save that so we don't have to go what the hell are we going to do for a christmas episode this year it'd be nice around the anniversary yeah i asked brendan that when we talked offline i was like oh is it christmas or is it at the anniversary and he felt in june for the anniversary which i'm fine with I don't I don't have any issue with that. It's just every year we have this struggle of what the hell are we going to talk about for a Christmas episode? Sounds like future Andy, Jamie, and Brendan's problem. <laughs> Fair point. Well, hopefully we'll be discussing Batgirl. Yeah, and Aquaman too. Yeah, so Christmas, you know, it might not be... Batgirl could, could, have, could kind of work as a Christmas episode, but um, yeah. Well, we, we chatted offline yesterday, Andy, too, and you said there was like a cool riddler christmas comic and the batman adventures mm-hmm. run like we could address that like there's there's christmas content Wait, well honestly when you say what would i like another crack at i'd like another crack at christmas with the joker and holiday nights oh i'm always down to talk about them so all right ideas thanks eric this gave us good ideas of things to plan for um and best of luck with your podcast eric eric has a podcast uh with joe forno it's the fire rises so yeah more batman content out there so thank you show from good people yeah good guys all right we got one last email here from mark bickford it says hey guys quick question for each of you oh it says andy i'm sure you've talked about if it happened but baby yet (laughs) I'm anticipating you and Catherine telling every potential suitor who will ever come around, don't expect her to be on time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So no, no baby yet, because I think I made that clear. She's, yep. Well, actually, here's the thing. She's not even late yet. We're just ready. That's the problem. We're trying to rush her, even though technically she's not due for another two weeks. So, so far, it's not really her fault. We're just like, come on, girl, it's time. Um, anyway, Brendan, other than the opening and closing ceremonies, what is the one event at the Brisbane Olympics you'd be willing to sell everything and raise your family in the car to buy tickets for? And then Jamie, Bruce Wayne called. He wants to gift you with an all expenses paid three year closed end lease on one of the following vehicles on the condition that you make it your summertime daily ride for the next three years. The Shelby GT 500 Mustang, the Dodge Hellcat, you can pick a Charger or a Challenger or the Top Line Corvette. Now, two questions for all of you. Why do some people think that a company that makes its living off of background noise TV is going to completely upend the Apple cart and magically bring back two actors who have said quite loudly that they're done? <laughs> and this just occurred to me. I'm wondering what you think. Battinson's Joker for the sequel, Kristen Stewart. Not playing Flashpoint Martha or anything, just Joker's female and is played by her. I think done correctly, it could be on par with what Heath Ledger did. Have a great week, Mark. Wow, Mark. You're overachiever. That's a lot in there. So I addressed the baby. She ain't here yet. We're still waiting. Brendan, what would you sell your house and raise your family in the car to go to an event at the Brisbane Olympics? Um... There would be two. It would be if the Australian men's basketball team made it to a medal match. Um, I would move heaven and earth to get to that. Um, And also a night of swimming finals when hopefully the men's 4x100 freestyle relays on because that's always a lot of fun and that was my favourite event from Sydney. So 
those two. All right. And Jamie, uh, all expenses, three-year closed lease of a Shelby GT500 Mustang, Dodge Hellcat, or a Corvette? Mustang. Easiest question I'm ever going to answer. Because number one, really? I'm a Ford guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Number one, I'm a Ford guy. I was raised in a Ford family, but at least my grandfather. My father, he doesn't care, but my grandfather was a big Ford guy. Um, Carol Shelby is a personal hero of mine. I've mentioned that before. Uh, I, I love Mustangs. They're, they're basically my favorite cars. I used to own one, then I had kids, and now I don't have one. Uh, all due respect to the, the Hellcats, I think they're great vehicles. If I had to pick that, I would pick the Challenger because the Charger doesn't come with a manual transmission option. And Corvettes, for all the respect I would give those cars, my fat ass doesn't fit in them worth a damn. So, Mustang. Mm. See, I would go with the Challenger because now that counts as a Batmobile. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so the first question, the other question, this feels like a rhetorical question of why do people think that a company uh, are going to bring back actors who said that they're done? Um, uh, you, you, what do you want me to say? We always say that. I don't think they will, but I wish they would. <laughs> it's just yeah you know hope springs eternal and i guess there's something to be said for that but yeah I, I'm, I ain't holding my breath which is why i'm looking forward to what's coming in that the world needs heroes uh, sizzle um and then Kristen stewart as the joker what do you think of that jamie it's certainly not high on my priority list of things that I want to see done, but if it happens, I guess I'll give it its fair chance and see what happens in the context of a trailer and or the film itself. But you, you leave me in charge of it. I sure as hell ain't choosing that. And not because I'm object to the Joker being a female. I just, I don't know, Kristen Stewart. I'm, I'm sure she's a fine actress and all, but no, no, thanks. I'm good. Okay, Brendan, what do you think? Correct me if I'm wrong here, but didn't they have a really messy breakup? Those two, like, don't they? I think. Not like each other. But I also, so, yeah, I also haven't paid that much attention. So I don't think it would happen just for that reason. Um, look, I don't know. I'm, I'm. It's not something I'd be rushing to see. So, I mean, it's a little. It's a little different, but I wouldn't be opposed. I do think she's a good actor, and um, it would certainly be a, a way to switch things up. So I would go with it if that's what somebody wanted to do, but it would also wouldn't be my first choice. Fun fact, huh. the the discount bin had the, I'm pretty sure it was the Twilight movie series. The whole bundle was $15 this week. And I thought, huh, that's a okay. pretty good price. You know, that's like three bucks a movie. I'll buy that. And I remember I liked the first Twilight movie. I didn't love it, but I thought that wasn't that bad. And then I remember how much I hated the second one. I'm like, no, save the $15 for something else. Uh, <laughs> for me, the only good thing I, uh, about Twilight is it gave us Anna Kendrick. Yeah, no kidding. I didn't even like the first one. I was willing to give it a shot, too, because I was like, yeah, I like I vampires. Was... I yeah. With an open mind. I went and saw it at the cinema and I hated it. Yeah, I'm like, nope, this is not for me. I, I like it but, when they, they toy with the vampire lore a little bit. Like, I know it's cool to make fun of those movies for the sparkly vampire thing, but to me, that seemed like an excellent motivation for a vampire to want to stay the hell out of the sunlight is not because it kills them, but because it exposes them for being different or being vampires. I was like, that's that's an interesting idea. I like that. In the love story wasn't the strongest. The, the script itself wasn't the strongest. But I watched the movie and I thought that was fine. I, I liked it. But yeah, that, that second one, I, I didn't even make it all the way through. I had to shut it off at like an hour and 15 minutes. I couldn't do it. Well, all right. Let's wrap it up, guys. We're going to close the Wayne Manor mailbox. If you guys have something for us for the next time, you can send that to holybatcast at rf4rm.com. If you happen to hear an episode uh, coming up without the Wayne Manor mailbox, that's going to be your clue that my daughter was probably born and you're listening to something else. Because um, there's a few episodes that are like, there is backup in case that happens. So uh, 
Well, maybe I'll be, we'll be back next week. Maybe it'll be a couple weeks. We just don't know. All depends on that baby. But that's we're wrapping up this thing. Guys, always a pleasure. Jamie, thanks for making the time this evening and breaking away from your Chinese food. Yeah, yeah that was good Chinese food, too. By the way, listen, somebody hit that mailbox up. I need some help with something. My wife cooks really good Chinese food, but she doesn't want to like make egg rolls. And I can't find a frozen egg roll that's worth a shit. So if somebody out there has got a re- recommendation for a good frozen egg roll that I can drop in the air fryer and pull it out and be happy with it instead of the garbage that I was eating tonight, please, please let me know. And since I don't have okay. social media, let me know through the Wayne Manor mailbox. So hashtag Email. back egg rolls. There you go. Any frozen egg roll uh, suggestions in the Help Wayne Manor mailbox. Help a brother out. Help a brother out. Brendan, thank you too. No worries, my friend. Always a pleasure. Yeah, tell everybody where they can find you since they can't find Jamie. Ah, uh, well, when I'm not outside your bedroom window, I am on Twitter <laughs> at lovey 7 um, and my two podcasts, The Nightlight and Sitting on Our Rings podcast. You can find me, just Google them, you'll find me. Sweet. All right. I already told you guys where to find me. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for downloading the show. Please do subscribe wherever you get your podcast so you never miss an episode. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Visit HolyBatCast.com or find Holy Batcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube. If you've got something for the Wayne Manor mailbox, again, that mailbox or that email address is HolyBatCast at RF4RM.com. A big thank you to Gora Venkateswar. He does our theme music. His work can be found at GVTunes.com. And a big thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring the show. You can find their stuff at Manscaped.com. And if you're going to buy something... Use our code BATSCAPED for 20% off. That'll do it. On behalf of Jamie and Brendan, I've been Andy. We'll see you next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. Holy Batcast is not affiliated with Warner Brothers or DC Entertainment. The views and opinions shared by the participants are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the companies or organizations they happen to work for. dreamt of a better world. That's why he saved me. You can go to any timeline, any universe. Why'd fight to save this one? What could be greater than a king? The hero. That would be the biggest opening weekend for a Batman movie of all time, which is current. Oh, Jesus. What the hell is that? Sounds like a fire alarm. Oh. Yep. Whoops. Hold on one second. It's just the candle I've been burning while I'm talking. One second. Ah! Oh my god. I was going to say, did somebody burn the stew or what? <laughs> <laughs>